Hi, I'm Addison, but all my friends call me Addie. I'm just an ordinary girl who doesn't have any particular talents, but there is one thing I do have. That is, oh, why don't we just watch the video to see what it is? This is my older sister, Olivia. She's beautiful, isn't she? She's also an amazing singer and has a talent for art. She can pretty much draw anything. I mean, I don't know how my parents could have such a perfect daughter like her, then have me. But I'm fine with that. Olivia was all about winning trophies and medals. Well, I was happy with the ice cream and ton of snacks my parents gave me for getting a B on my math exam. Hey, Addie, my baby. Guess who's got some new trendy clothes? Oh, Mom. Dad. I don't like these things. Why are you buying so much? It's such a waste of money. However, Mom's desperate look made me cave. So I reluctantly grabbed a random item and went to try it on. Oh, it's a crop top. I stared at myself in the mirror. Okay, so my parents' dumbfounded expressions made their feelings pretty clear. I looked ridiculous. See, I told you already. I'm way too short to wear tops like this. Right at that moment, Olivia walked by. I immediately ran over to her. I think you should have this top. It'll bring out your nice figure. You'll look so cute in it. Mom shook her head. No, if Olivia wears this, everyone will see her navel. Um, isn't that the point of crop tops? Then Dad chimed in. Anyway, Liv, where are you off to in such a hurry? It's not that nonsense model club again, is it? Speaking of clubs, is the school dance club still recruiting? You should join. You'll get in for sure. My sister rolled her eyes, then left, slamming the door behind her. I loved my sister, but she just seems to find me annoying. She was like the ice queen, always shutting me out. She never allows me to borrow her clothes or to touch her stuff. And if I ever try to go into her room, she freaks out. It's not that she's mean as such, but she tends to act like I don't even exist. <sighs> it's okay. I mean... I'm kind of used to it. I live my own life and she lives hers. So that's why when I got my first cell phone and started to use social networks, I didn't try to search for her profiles, though I knew she was on all those platforms. That evening, my mom asked me to go upstairs to call Olivia for dinner. No answer. So I began pushing the door open. She suddenly appeared from the bathroom and yelled, Hey, what are you doing? You know you're not allowed in my room. I knocked, but you didn't answer. Mom says it's dinner time. She hissed at me and shooed me away. Ugh, why did she have to treat me like I was some pest? The way she was so weird about her room was annoying. Hmm, maybe she was hiding something in there? Nah, probably I was just overthinking this. Olivia was always like this. Life went on, and my sister, well, she continued to distance herself from me. But then one weekend, I walked downstairs to find her cheerfully humming a song as she danced around the kitchen. When she saw me, she smiled and said, Morning, sis. Come sit here. I made you breakfast. Okay? This was weird. I cautiously sat down and kept looking at her. Um, why are you so happy? And where are mom and dad? Mom and dad just rushed off on some work thing. Then she put the plate in front of me, grinned, then continued. Mom made cookies this morning and told you to take them to grandma's. Tell her I said hi. Oh, you're not coming with me? No, no can do. Sorry, I've got work to do. She continued to look at me and I got the feeling she wanted me to hurry up. Before I'd even finished my toast, she passed me my jacket and bundled me out of the door. Having no choice, I made my way to Granny's while in deep thoughts about how odd this was. Until I realized that I didn't even have the cookie bag with me. I'd left it at home. Gosh! I immediately rushed back. But, hmm, why was there a strange car parked outside my house? I lingered back and watched as a middle-aged man got out of the car. 
before he even got to the door, Olivia opened it and smiled at him. I dove behind a bush so I could carry on watching. Huh? Why was he handing her flowers and a gift box? She happily took them from him and even leaned into his ear and said something. Oh my god! So this explains my sister's strange behavior. They're a couple, aren't they? I never thought that my sister would be interested in an old man like this. Shocking! But wait, what if... What if he's deceiving her? As Olivia may look sharp, but she's actually very innocent. If that was the case, I would beat him black and blue. But this was just my speculation. I can't hastily act without knowing the truth. So I decided not to let them know that I was there, and quietly entered the house through the back door to get the cookie bag. Later that day when I arrived home, my sister was back to her ice queen self. She was cooking in silence, so I told her grandma said hi, and she just grunted and carried on stirring her soup. Hmm, I needed to find out what was actually going on. The perfect opportunity arose a few weeks later, when mom and dad went away on a weekend trip. I told Olivia I was meeting some friends for a picnic, but this was a lie. I actually hid in my faithful hiding spot and watched. As expected, the old man showed up and Olivia let him inside. The door was ajar, so I tiptoed inside and heard them laughing in the living room. I peeked in, and to my astonishment, my sister was sitting on the couch wearing the weirdest outfit ever. It was those kinds of clothes that only catwalk models wear. And most of all, she had this heavy makeup on and looked like a totally different person. The strange man was sitting next to her. Both of them were looking at her phone and laughing happily. Oh gosh, now everything was clear. From her reserved nature to her seem-to-be-secret room, it was all so she could continue to hide this age difference love story. I didn't know how to react now. I just kind of felt bad for her because she had to hide it. I mean, this was her home. And we were her family. We might not have been close, but she was my big sister. And I wanted her to be happy. If this love was real, then I fully supported her. And if this guy turned out to be bad, well then I'd protect her to the end. My parents returned that evening, so I set up a family movie night. A great idea for family bonding, right? I chose a romantic movie in which the main actress is much younger than her boyfriend. In the middle of the movie, I turned to my parents and asked, Mom, Dad, if you were their parents, would you allow that relationship? They gave me confused looks. Then Dad immediately asked, Hey, Addie. Don't tell us that you're in love with an old man, huh? This startled me, but before I could say anything, the doorbell rang. I was about to go open the door, just to avoid answering Dad's question, but Olivia was faster. Not long after that, she turned back and shouted at me. Addie, how dare you touch my phone? What's up, Liv? Who's at the door? Go ask your dear daughter Addison. She gave me a dirty look, then stormed up to her room. My parents immediately bombarded me with loads of questions. What's happening here? Who was the one ringing the bell? Why that manner of Olivia? Okay, the one who rang the bell was Olivia's boyfriend. So, earlier, when Olivia left her phone in the kitchen, I noticed that there was a message from a man named Henry Davis. I immediately searched for him on Facebook and found out that this was the same guy who'd been visiting her. So... I used her phone to text him, telling him to come around at 8 p.m. I thought it would be better if Olivia could make her relationship public with our parents. But, Hayes, it seems she didn't take it very well. Anyway, now I had no choice but to tell my parents everything. Their faces dropped, and without saying anything, they ran upstairs and banged on Olivia's door. But there was no reply. Instead, all of us heard a rattling sound from the back door, and... Olivia had fled. Our parents' faces turned red, while I felt so guilty as I not only wasn't able to help her, but only worsened the situation. The next day, Olivia still hadn't returned. She also didn't show up for school, which caused my parents to freak out. 
Then I suddenly thought of Henry. Right. Why didn't I think of asking him from the beginning? So I immediately contacted Henry and asked him to help find Olivia. That afternoon, when I just got home from school, I saw Henry driving off. There was a note stuck to the door saying Olivia was fine with an address below. And it also said if we come there at 9 a.m., we'll see Olivia. The next morning, we showed up earlier than scheduled. Huh? It was a studio. And just like Henry said, Olivia was there. She looked so glamorous and was so busy prepping for a photo shoot that she didn't seem to notice us. Henry welcomed us and started explaining everything that made my parents, as well as me, speechless. Turns out, the truth was far from what I thought. He was not her boyfriend. Instead, he's her manager. He saw Olivia's potential and guided her to become a photo model and a TikToker. The flowers and gifts were from the brand she was working with. And the other day, she wore that outfit and makeup for a TikTok video. After the shoot was over, we walked over to her. But she took one look at us and ran away. I managed to catch up with her, then said, Sis, why didn't you just tell us the truth? We're your family. We'll always be on your side. On my side? Really? You have no idea what it's like to be an outsider. It doesn't matter how many competitions I win. I'm invisible, while you get praised for just getting an okay grade on a math test. I want to be a model, but they don't want that for me. They want me to be miserable. I'd rather leave that house to do what I love. I was dumbfounded, and so were mom and dad, who by this point had caught up with us and heard everything she'd just said. Dad hugged Olivia, then in an emotional voice said, Olivia, it's not that we forbid you from doing what you want. We were just worried for you. We just know that this industry can be complicated, and we don't want you to get hurt. That's right. And it's not true that we love Addie more than you. You just excel at everything, and we just didn't want Addie to feel insecure. We're really sorry, Olivia. We all love you. Oh, no, Mom. Don't worry. I never felt that way. Actually, I've always admired Olivia. And it made me sad when she ignored me. Olivia burst out crying, and our whole family hugged each other tightly. Sorry to interrupt, but you must have had some idea about Olivia being an internet star already, right? I mean, it's easy to tell from her social networks. I shyly said, I... I don't follow any of her accounts. I thought she just wanted me out of her way. Henry then patted my head and showed us Olivia's social media accounts. And wow, she had millions of views and followers. We all watched some of her TikTok videos together, and she totally rocked it. Seeing how much this meant to her, my parents came round to the idea of her being a model, and they even thanked Henry for helping her. Then Olivia came closer to me. Hey, Addie. I'm sorry for being so cold in the past. Turns out, you love me so much and will support me regardless. At least now, if I really fall in love with an old man, I don't have to worry, right? Then everyone laughed. Oh, even though my plan didn't, well, go exactly as intended, I still call it a success, because it all ended out great in the end. You thought it was all finished, huh? Nope, not yet. There's one more thing I want to show you guys. That night, for the first time, Olivia let me go inside her room. Wow, it was like a mini studio with expensive flashlights, a ring light, and a camera. And her clothes and makeup collection were super impressive. Oh, do you remember what I said at the beginning of the video about being an ordinary girl? Well, that hasn't changed but now I can confidently say that there is one thing I do have, and that's an awesome big sister who loves me unconditionally. Wow! Magnificent! So I'm going to live here from now on? Unbelievable! Everything has happened so quickly that I was struggling to believe it was real. Yesterday afternoon, when I was helping out in my family's diner, suddenly a film crew rushed in and claimed that they were from the reality TV program Long Lost Love, which reunites lost family members. 
While I stood there confused, they announced to me that I was the lost child of the famous director Gabriel Perez. What? Did that mean my parents adopted me? Through tears, my parents told me that 13 years ago, in a bustling, crowded fair, they saw me wandering around aimlessly, so they brought me home. And even though they reported it to the cops, there were no leads, so they decided to adopt me. And so begins my life as a young lady of a rich family. As you'd expect with the home of a famous director, my father's mansion was impeccable. From the designer furniture to the stylish decor, the whole house was like a French-style castle. I peered at the huge photo of my grand-looking parents. Suddenly, there was a whisper. The master must be very happy, you know. His second wife couldn't give him a child after all these years. Yes, yes, now that he's older, he had to search for his biological child to lean on. Oh, so this woman, the woman who came with Dad to the reunion yesterday, wasn't my biological mother? Hmm, in that case, I wonder who's my real mom? Miss, come in, please! Inside were my parents, and some specialists, who then immediately pulled me in for a complete makeover. Whoa, I looked really gorgeous. My hair was so glossy, and this makeup made me look so glamorous. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think I would end up living here and feeling like a princess. Beaming with happiness, I turned to look at my dad. But suddenly, I was startled to meet eyes with the maid. She looked so gloomy. Why did she keep staring at me with a poker face? Hmm, that was odd. Carol, let's move along. Strange. But never mind. Maybe she's always like that when she's seeing strangers. OMG. Dinner was so luxurious, including caviar and steak. This was so exciting. That night, I couldn't sleep and just rolled around in bed until dawn. But little did I know what an exhausting day was waiting for me ahead. 5 a.m. sharp, I was shaken awake. Huh? Was there a fire or something? A maid informed me that I had a very important press conference this morning, and it was imperative I looked the part. I groggily got out of bed and plonked myself in the chair. I had to wear this posh dress and have this old-fashioned, bouncy hairstyle. Ugh, this made me look about 25. OMG, I swear this press conference was the most boring thing ever. For several hours, their conversations couldn't stray away from showing off their wealth, comparing their popularity, and all the showbiz stuff. I yawned dozens of times, but had to hide it behind my hand. I could feel my stepmother scrutinizing me. Ugh, I wanted to go home. You see, the type of person I hate the most are those kinds of showy, scornful ladies. But unfortunately, they're the only ones I've been interacting with. I missed hanging out with the kids my own age. But yeah, since I moved here, my parents insisted on homeschooling me so I wouldn't be influenced by other inferior children. Ugh, worse still, the only thing they teach me is about acting and movie stuff. How is that going to help me get into college? But that's not all. After studying, despite being tired, my stepmother forced me to spend a further two hours working out in the home gym. Every time I gasped for breath or snuck a snack, she would give me a novel long lecture. The worst part is she banned anything sweet and made me stick to this strict diet full of celery and hummus. Gross! Then one time I slipped and fell off the exercise bike and twisted my ankle. My stepmother was so furious with me that she made me go to bed without my dinner. I couldn't take it anymore, so I hobbled into my father's room. Dad, why do I have to do these things? I don't like it! Dad said nothing but just quietly signaled for me to follow him. He led me to a locked room at the end of the hallway. When the door opened, I saw a portrait of a very beautiful woman hanging in the middle of the room. Hang on a minute. My new hair and clothes were identical to hers. 
Dad stared at the portrait with dreamy eyes. Then he said that this woman used to be a very famous actress. He told me how they fell in love. Then she gave birth to me. So that means this is my mother? That's right. Your mother is very beautiful, isn't she? And I'll make you perfect just like her. Then Dad waved me out of there, locked the door, and went away, leaving me standing alone shaking. There was something about his words that unsettled me. Curious about Mum, I went to an old maid to ask for more information. It turned out that in the past, my dad was my mum's manager, and thanks to her popularity, he made a lot of money. Mum was the muse for dad's movies and also the love of his life. But unfortunately, because of a serious illness, she passed away. That was a huge trauma for dad, and he seemed to lose himself. Ever since then, his head's been in the clouds, and he doesn't always make a lot of sense. Is that true? No wonder sometimes I found dad's words creepy. It's time for your yoga lesson. And why exactly are you talking to her? Now that you're rich, show some dignity. Don't liaise with the staff. You're not my mom. You can't control me. How dare you? I'm only showing you kindness because your father asked me to. A silly little girl like you means nothing to me. You're so mean. It's no surprise why. You know, my mother is a hundred times prettier than you. That's why dad wants to make me like her. You? You! Sooner or later, you'll end up like my poor daughter. Just enjoy the calm before the storm. Huh? What did she say? What daughter? Didn't people say she had no children? Then, a few days later, as I was walking down the hallway, feeling exhausted because my current diet plan only included two apples a day, I heard the maids whispering to each other. Look, she won't be able to hold out. It won't last long. Her looks are fading. It's not long now. Then she'll end up like the previous one. What previous one? I went over to ask, but on seeing me, they immediately made up some excuses to flee the scene. Suddenly, someone leaned into my ear and said, Try not to lose your looks. Or else. Huh? I turned and saw that it was that strange maid, Carol. As I watched her walk off, I wondered what she meant by that. Obviously, she doesn't like me, but why? Honestly, there are so many confusing things about this family. Everything is so far from normal, it may as well be on its own planet. They're hiding something from me. I just need to figure out what. One day, while Dad and Patricia went away for an event, I snuck into their bedroom and looked around for the key to the secret room. Result! It was hidden in an old jewelry box. And whoa, this place was full of photos and DVDs and stuff. I found an album labeled Happy Family, and there were so many photos of Dad and Patricia with a pretty little baby girl. There was one photo of that baby girl turned 10. Written on the back of it was 12-15-2014. Happy birthday, our pretty sweetheart. Stay beautiful, Carol. Carol? The birth year. Green eyes. Could it be? That's it. The baby girl was Carol, the maid. Maybe puberty hitting changed her appearance and she's not as pretty anymore. But I could still tell some of her old features. So Carol was the previous young lady and also the poor daughter that Patricia mentioned. Hmm, that made sense. As I'd seen Patricia interacting more with her than the other maids. I once even noticed her helping Carol clean up the dishes. I was still overwhelmed with the secret I just found out when I looked through the window and saw Dad's car pull up in the driveway. Panicked, I took that photo and ran out of there. I had to leave this place, or else I'd turn into another Carol. I kept on running, but then I bumped straight into Patricia. Oh no, please let me go. I don't want to live like this any longer, please. Patricia snatched the photo from my hand, then took my wrist and dragged me along. Let me go! Get in the car. Uh, uh... Where do you want to go? Um, to my adoptive parents' house. On our way, 
Patricia told me everything. She was once a famous actress who met, then fell for Gabriel. At first, she didn't mind attaining his high beauty standards, but then she realized that how he made her act and dress was all based on his late wife. She thought that having a child would change him, so they adopted Carol. She was very beautiful when she was little, so they spoiled her and took her everywhere to brag. But when she grew older, her looks began to fade, so Gabriel made her their maid. My dad needed a pretty girl to be her replacement, to be his own muse, so he decided to find another one. Truth was, he had no long-lost daughter. Instead, he got a private detective to look up unsolved missing child cases and discovered me. Oh my god. Unbelievable! Now Patricia, too, was exhausted from living this life, with a man who was still besotted with his dead wife. She felt bad for Carol, and for me, too. So, okay, turns out Patricia wasn't as bad as I thought. On the contrary, she was kind of pitiful. We are so sorry for letting you move into that house. I knew there was something not quite right about the situation, but I wanted you to be happy without money worries. So, we let you go. We should have realized. We're so sorry. I'm sorry for not being able to stop Gabriel. He went too far. I was sobbing in my mom's arms when I saw Gabriel. He stormed in and dragged me along. This one's mine, so she's coming with me. You can't just buy her. She's my daughter. Right at that moment, my sister Hannah arrived back from school. Gabriel's eyes lit up when he saw her. Then he immediately rushed over and grabbed her arm. Ha ha ha, then I'll take this one. Not so pretty, but I can make it work. We all charged towards him and freed Hannah from his grasp. Gabriel seemed frantic and refused to leave. My parents had to literally bundle him out of the house, then call the cops. So, what now? Well, at first, I was pretty mad with my parents for letting me go so easily. But I guess they just wanted me to have no money struggles or anything. <sighs> so, I've forgiven them. And now we all live a humble but happy life running the diner. Carol and her mom visit sometimes. They moved out of Gabriel's mansion, and they seem much happier now. As for Gabriel, as far as I know, he's still searching for the perfect beauty to replace his dead wife. There's a part of me that kind of feels sorry for him. But luckily, he can't come anywhere near me or my family, as we have a restraining order against him. Looking back on it all, I now realize that I already had everything I needed. Okay, so we might not be rich, but we have kindness, love, and happiness. And trust me, those things are way more important than bags full of money. Ah, now what better way is there to spend a Saturday afternoon than lying on the couch watching a feel-good movie with lots of snacks? Ugh, I suppose I better get that. O-M-G. Who is this? He's the most gorgeous boy I've ever seen in my life. I stared at him in open-mouthed amazement, but then I saw him gazing back at me and realized I needed to say something. Hey, how may I help you? Hi, I'm Jaden. My mum and I have just moved in next door. Oh, in that case... Welcome to the neighborhood. Jaden smiled as he held a box out to me. W was this a gift for me? Already? I took it from him and blushed out a thanks. I opened the box and saw that it was full of delicious looking cookies. My mom baked them. She finds that people tend to be far more welcoming when it involves cookies. We chatted for a bit longer. Then he said he had to go and help his mom unpack. Aw, why did this moment have to end already? The next day at school, I couldn't wait to find my bestie Stella and tell her about my drop-dead gorgeous neighbor. But as it happens, she found me at my locker and immediately started gushing about this hot new boy. Hmm, I needed to see how handsome this guy was. My chance came at lunchtime when Stella pointed over at the new boy who was currently being pestered by Anna, this stuck-up girl from class. 
I squinted my eyes. O-M-G. The hot new boy was none other than Jaden. I watched on as Anna fluttered her eyelashes at him, then flicked her hair behind her back. Ugh. She needed to give the flirting a break. It was so tragic. Suddenly, Jaden saw me, smiled, then hurried over to me. Hi, Laura. Oh boy, am I glad to see you. He leaned in close to my ear and whispered, That girl is kind of freaking me out. Please, can we get out of here? Then to my surprise, he took my hand and led me away. I could see the shocked look on Anna's face, and I couldn't help but smirk back at her. Ha! Huh, take that, Anna. He's holding my hand, not yours. Then after school, Jaden and I walked home together. Turns out, as well as being the hottest guy on the planet, he was also really sweet and funny. <sighs> back home, I saw Jaden's mom. Cynthia watering her window box. On seeing us, she waved us over, then insisted on inviting me inside for homemade lemonade. We all got on so well. Looks like I'm going to have a boyfriend soon, one whose mom loves me. <laughs> From then onward, Jaden and I hung out lots. We had lunch together, we went to the library together, and always walked home together. I was pretty sure the girls at school were super jealous, especially Anna. One day, during P.E., the teacher told us we were playing dodgeball and assorted us into two teams. Anna, who was on the opposite side, wouldn't quit aiming at me. I tried my best to dodge her throws, but bang! She got me! Now, listen to me. Guys like Jaden don't like ordinary girls like you. He's mine, so quit chasing him. Furious, I yelled. I'm not chasing him. He's already my boyfriend. Um, actually, not. Yet, I was pretty sure Jaden liked me, too. Just you wait. He'll soon tire of you and come running to me. Ugh. Anna was so annoying. I needed to get my frustrations off my chest, so I ranted to Stella about her. Forget Anna. No one likes her anyway. As for Jaden, it's obvious he likes you. He's just new here and probably feels too shy to ask you out. Yeah, you're probably right. He must just be shy. But, ugh, I know Anna won't quit chasing him. Then you should make your relationship with Jaden official. Stella had a point. If Jaden was too shy to ask me out, then maybe I should take the initiative. Then Anna would have no choice but to back off. Ha! Huh. Tonight was the night. So I texted Jaden, I need your help with something. Let's meet at 8 p.m. by the slide in the park. But then he messaged back saying he couldn't meet tonight as he had to help his mom with something. Right that moment, my dad arrived home earlier than usual and announced that he was taking me and my sister Megan out for dinner. Ooh, this restaurant looked nice. I walked in alongside Megan and... Huh? What were Jaden and his mom doing here? Then my dad walked over to Cynthia, kissed her on the cheek, and said, Hello, honey. Jaden and I shared astonished looks. Then we peered at the adults for an explanation. Laura, Megan, this is Ms. Green, the lady I told you about. What? I mean, I knew Dad was dating a woman named Ms. Green, but I had no idea she was Jaden's mom. Then, before we knew what was happening, Dad got down on one knee and pulled out this diamond ring and asked her to marry him. And you know what? She said yes! Oh, no. No, 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 no! They can't marry! Because then Jaden will be my brother! Megan looked delighted and hugged them both while I stared at Jaden in bewilderment. Don't get me wrong, I really want my dad to be happy, but why her? And what about me and Jaden? After that, Cynthia seemed to always be at our house, baking cakes, humming while she dusted and cleaned up, and exchanging gooey looks with my dad. Ew. Then one day, she insisted that Megan and I went wedding dress shopping with her. 
She tried on this one dress, and... Yeah, okay, she looked pretty good in it. But when she asked me what I thought about it, I just shook my head and said, Well, it's not very flattering, is it? She tried on several more dresses, but I managed to find fault with them all. Then, when I noticed how disheartened she looked, I patted her shoulder and said, Don't worry, Cynthia. You can always postpone the wedding until you find a suitable dress. She looked a bit taken aback, but then she just smiled at me and said, That's okay, Laura. I'm going to go with the first one. Ugh. Anyway, now the dress was chosen, so at least I could go home now, right? Wrong. As on the way home, we passed an arcade. Cynthia led us there and then excitedly challenged me to a game of air hockey. Then I said jokingly, Fine, I'll play, but if you lose, you don't deserve to be my mother. And guess what? She won! Ugh! And worse still, Megan wouldn't quit giving me dirty looks for the comments I'd made. Jeez, I was just joking. What is wrong with you today? I plopped down on the couch and blurted out everything. She'd take my side, right? Um, turns out, no, she wouldn't. What? You and Jaden aren't even official. But Dad loves Cynthia. They both deserve happiness. So stop being a brat about it. Then she stormed off to her room. Ugh, I feel like I'm going crazy. I have huge feelings towards Jaden, and I know he feels the same. So why can't my sister be mature enough to understand that and support me? I needed to vent to someone. Luckily for me, I had Stella. Why does no one care about my feelings? I can't be Jaden's sister. Um, sorry, Lara. I don't know what to say. Suddenly, from the nearby table came a lousy voice. So that's the reason why Jaden has to hang out with you? You're pathetic, Lara. Turns out we were so lost in conversation, we didn't notice Anna and her flock sitting at the table behind us. Actually, we've been into each other for ages. It's not our fault our parents made some dumb decision. Anyway, whether we can be together or not, it doesn't change the fact that you bore him so much that he'd choose watching paint dry over being with you. How dare you! She was about to grab my hair, but right at that moment, a hand stopped her. It was Jaden! That afternoon, on our walk home, I finally came clean to Jaden. I like you a lot. I have always been since I first met you. I know you like me too, but you think it'll be awkward because our parents are getting married. Maybe if we just tell- Laura, you're such a sweet girl, and I do like you, but just as a sister. What? How could he say that to me? He had to like me, didn't he? Feeling an unexplainable amount of shame and embarrassment, I ran away from him. As I lay on my bed and rubbed my tear-stained eyes, all I could think about was how unfair this was. So, by the time Dad called me down for dinner, and I walked in and saw how happy he looked, my anger got the better of me and I yelled, I hate you, and I hate Cynthia! How dare you try and replace Mom! Then I rushed back to my room. You really upset Dad. You know that, right? I didn't answer. I was also upset, but no one seemed to care about my feelings. Dad said we come first, so if you really feel this strongly about it, then he'll cancel the wedding. To be honest, I'm real mad with you right now. So? What about me? You're so immature and selfish! I didn't understand how my own sister could be so uncaring. So I screamed out. So what? You don't care that mom's being replaced by some fake woman? And what about me? Why does no one care how I feel? Oh my god, Laura, for once, this isn't about you! Megan rolled her eyes at me, then stormed off. Finally, everyone quit going on about the stupid wedding. But why didn't I feel good about this? Cynthia didn't seem to be coming round to our house anymore. 
and I noticed how Dad's cooking seemed to get worse and worse, until he stopped altogether and just ordered takeout. Meanwhile, Jaden wasn't anywhere to be seen at school. Stella asked around to find out where he was, and turns out he'd left, as he was moving back to his old town. No way! After school, I rushed straight over to his house and barged inside to find him and his mum packing. Are you... moving away? <sighs> yeah. I moved here to settle down and start a new life with Randall, and this house is for Jaden's future. But the wedding's been cancelled, so... I quickly asked Jaden if we could talk outside. My mom's cried so much. Randall's her soulmate, and she can't stay around here if she can't be with him anymore. The most annoying part is that she agrees with him that the kids must come first. So, I hope you're happy now? Oh my god, what have I done? His words were like a stab to my gut. Oh no, this was all my fault. I was so obsessed with Jaden that I didn't stop to think about what was best for everyone else. Without saying another word, I ran back home and burst into the kitchen where Dad was drearily staring into his iced coffee. Dad, you deserve to be happy with Cynthia. So, please go and tell her how you feel before she leaves for good. But it was too late. Cynthia and Jaden had gone. Just kidding! <laughs> Nah. Actually, Dad managed to catch Cynthia just in time, and he told her how much he loves her and can't live without her. So, guess what? Yep, they got married, and now they're both happier than ever. I've learned the hard way that being selfish and inconsiderate of other people's feelings for my own gain just makes everyone miserable, including myself. So, now we're one big happy family. And I suppose having Jaden as a brother isn't actually so bad after all. Wow, the International Ballet Contest is being held in New York this year! Oh my god, that must be spectacular! Er, but... oh... How different my life was five years ago. i just won the city ballet contest, and Dad wouldn't stop grinning with pride. To celebrate, he was driving to get us ice cream. And suddenly, I don't remember much about that day after that. But I lost him. As for me, I survived. But I was left with life-changing injuries. Since then, ballet was no longer a part of my life. And over there is Aunt Robin, and my cousin, Nancy. They're super excited about the competition. I swear, Nancy has tried on 15 dresses already. Both my aunt and my mom, when she was alive, were gifted ballerinas. So, naturally, Nancy also inherited the ballet genes. She's now a student of the New York City Ballet. This is something I've always wished for, but now can only dream about. Suddenly, a slamming door and shouting startled me. Joyce, 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 open the door! It's me, Dylan! I opened the door and stared wide-eyed at... Huh? Dylan, my half-brother. The last time I saw him was five years ago, when my stepmother took him away. Hmm, what's he doing here? Before I'd had time to react or invite him inside, he rushed over to me. Sis, you have to save me. I'm gonna have to stay here, okay? What? Absolutely not. Do you have any idea whose house this is? So, it turns out his mom is a gambling addict. So she was in debt and on the run from thugs. Poor Dylan didn't have anyone else to turn to. I managed to persuade my aunt to let Dylan stay with us, although she was adamant that this was only temporary until his mom was found. Being a typical kid hitting their puberty phase, Dylan was not the easiest person to live with. And guess who had to cover for him each time? Yep, me. Last week, he broke the whole stack of dishes. Yesterday, he stuck chewing gum in Nancy's hair. 
And today, he left his skateboard in the middle of the living room and caused Aunt Robin to fly across the room and land flat on her face. Ouch. Dylan, you have to be more careful. I'll be leaving for college soon, so I won't be here to cover for you. He'll kick you out if you're still like this. Huh? College? Do you mean boring business administration? I thought you liked ballet, don't you? No, that was just the past. Now I don't like it. At all! I don't believe you. Is it just because you're sitting on a wheelchair? Who says being in a wheelchair means you can't continue pursuing your passion for ballet? Hmm. This left me dumbfounded. His words had awakened something in me. But the reality is not that simple. So I sadly replied, It's not just that. I don't have any money either. I tried to apply for some part-time jobs, but they don't accept people with disabilities. Sensing my unhappiness at talking about this, Dylan immediately changed the topic. Okay, let's just forget about those dumb things. Tomorrow, I'm going to take you shopping. Oh, it's been a long time since I visited the mall. Dylan kept asking me if I like this, like that, but we don't have enough money. Ugh, why doesn't Aunt Robin give us pocket money? Dylan looked so cute at that moment. So I just sat there and laughed, while he frowned and pouted. Then, Dylan suddenly told me to stay still. When he closed his eyes and fumbled around towards two people who looked kinda rich, and told them, Please help us. We have nothing left to eat this week. Please? Oh my god. What was my brother playing at? I froze and couldn't do anything besides look down at the floor. The woman took out the money and was about to hand it to him. But the guy swiped her hand, causing the bill to fall to the ground. Dylan quickly picked it up. Oh. My. The man immediately grabbed his wrist. Busted! He threatened to take us to the cops and even asked me to stand up, as he thought I was also pretending. Luckily... The woman said they were in a rush, so they wouldn't make it complicated, so finally they left us alone. We came home, but our hearts were still pumping hard, and I could see Dylan's legs were trembling. Then we went inside to see that my aunt had guests. I gawped when I saw who they were. The rich people from the mall! The four of us goggle-eyed at each other in shock. Turns out that woman, Bernie, was my aunt's friend and the man with her was her son, Philip. They're both famous ballet dancers. Talk about awkward atmosphere! But Nancy seemed oblivious to the tension, as she was too busy fluttering her eyelashes at Philip and twirling her hair around her finger. But the strange thing was, even with my lowered gaze, I could still see Philip looking at me. Then he suddenly asked me, How long have you been like this? I mean... No offense, I'm just curious. So, Aunt Robin started telling them about my life and my condition. Hearing that, Bernie got emotional. She looked at me for a second and asked, Sweetie, how are things going for you? Are you still doing ballet? No, no, no. She's interested in business now. She'll enroll this fall. Bernie paused for a while, then smiling said, Oh, that's great. I'm happy that you found yourself something you love. I don't know why I felt so sad, so I excused myself to leave the table. Dylan followed me and handed me an envelope. I looked inside and it was full of money. I only have this much, but please take it and go take ballet classes again. My heart stopped. How could he afford it? But then, he didn't give me time to say anything, when he took the money back saying, Oh, or just let me enroll you. And surprisingly, he really did. Dylan found a center that had scholarships for students with disabilities. Since then, I went back to the ballet. It was like I was alive again. Every day I was eager to wake up to follow my passion. And I was also practicing for the International Ballet Contest in New York. 
One time after practice, I saw someone over by the door, watching me. Philip. I didn't know why, but as soon as I spotted him, my heart fluttered. He walked over to me, and we started talking. Turns out, he teaches at this center. After that, he always spent time helping me during practice, and we seemed to be a good pair. But good things didn't last long. That day I was practicing with Philip when a voice called out, Joyce, why are you here? I turned around startled to see a glaring Nancy standing at the door of the practice room. It turns out that Nancy came to meet and greet with her students in our center and accidentally spotted Philip helping me. Maybe she was upset because we looked quite close? After that, we met in the bathroom. Then Nancy asked me, I know you don't have a dollar to your name, so who gave you money for this? Oh, it was Dylan. Stop telling lies. He's just some dumb kid. I hardly imagine he has a spare $1,500 to pay for six months of lessons. You asked Phil to pay for you, right? Stop acting weak to get other sympathy. That doesn't sound like something my sweet cousin would normally do, does it? So, did Dylan lie to me? This course isn't a scholarship for people with disabilities? No way! I immediately packed my stuff to go home and to speak to Dylan about this. But on my way out, I bumped into Philip. So I asked him if it's true there's no such scholarship at this center. But he just sighed and led me to a quiet place to talk. And you know what? He admitted that it's him who actually had planned out everything with Dylan and even said that he liked me and wanted to help me. I was shocked. But deep down, I was also kind of happy hearing that, as I did like him. But I felt like I was a burden, and Nancy also liked him, so I rejected him. Nancy wasn't the same after that. Whenever our eyes met each other, she tutted, then looked away. Then one time, I found my ballet shoes soaked in coffee, and another time there was even a note in my bag saying, Don't chase after Philip, because you can't run. LOL. It had to be my lovely cousin who did these things, right? I felt upset a bit at first, but I didn't have time for her games. I had a competition to practice for. Then, the day before the performance, I arrived home to overhear Aunt Robin in the living room FaceTiming Bernie. Hey, you should send more money. Joyce is partaking in a ballet competition this time, so it's rather costly. Really? But you told me she wasn't interested in ballet anymore. In any case, why didn't she take the ballet scholarship for the New York City Ballet? Stop going off topic. Remember, you were the culprit to the death of my brother-in-law and the legs of my niece. So, you have to take the blame for this whole life. And now you can't even see fit to spare what is loose change for you to fund her dream? What? What were they talking about? I was so shocked that I dropped my grocery bag on the floor. Aunt Robin turned around and saw me. Realizing I'd overheard everything, she beckoned me into the room and told me the whole tragic story. It turns out that the person who caused the accident was none other than Bernie. She'd crossed the road without looking, which caused my dad to steer to avoid her and crash into a tree. After that, she ran away, as she was so panicked and feared that it would affect her reputation. Through her friendship with Aunt Robin, she knew about my situation and still had been sending monthly money to compensate for me. What about the scholarship Miss Bernie was talking about? Um, well, you can't attend that school anyway, so it's better to let Nancy take it, isn't it? What? I can't believe my aunt would do that. She knows how much I love ballet. I've always thought Aunt Robin was so good to give me a home, when in reality, she was using me, so Bernie would invest in Nancy's ballet career. The word disappointment cannot fully describe my feelings at that moment. The hurt was almost unbearable. I woke up feeling dreadful, 
but I forced myself to get ready and headed to the competition. It was bustling there, just like me inside. I didn't bother to watch the other performances until Nancy's. She was very graceful, and the judges said she did very well. However, I felt like it was missing something. And now, it was my turn. I looked down to the crowd and saw there was Bernie, Dylan, and Philip. They all smiled and clapped their hands when the MC called my name. I took a deep breath and was about to go out on the stage when passing me, Nancy leaned over and whispered, Philip doesn't really care about you. He just feels guilty about what his mom did. Don't go embarrass him by messing up. Suddenly, I felt like I couldn't move. I forgot all the movements and the world was spinning around. But a familiar voice woke me up. Joyce, you're better than this. We're all here for you, so don't be scared. You're the light. Don't let the dark bother you. Let's shine and show them what you have. I was so touched, and it worked. I regained my spirit and just went with the flow. Like a swan that had been restrained for so long, I just did what I wanted to do. I didn't care about anything, anyone. This moment, I'll live for myself. And maybe the judges felt that too. I burst with happiness to hear that. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this contest is... Joyce Baker. Everyone came to congratulate me, including Bernie. She tried to fight back tears as she apologized for everything. The past is the past, and I know what happened was a terrible accident. It's something she will always have to live with, and that seems penance enough. So I hugged her and told her it was okay, because what matters was that I could dance again, and it felt fantastic. So what's next? Well, I didn't go to business school. <laughs> Instead, I'm continuing with my ballet. I'm also undergoing treatment for my condition, and I hope that one day... I will be able to be up there on stage, performing with Philip. Speaking of Philip, thanks to his help, Dylan and I moved into our own house. And Dylan has just got a scholarship into a prestigious high school, which he seems to be enjoying. Oh, and one more thing. Philip and I are now officially dating. And this is it. The happy ending of my fairy tale. Guys, keep chasing your dream despite hardship, because all good things are waiting for you at the end of the tunnel. Hey, get up! Who are you? What are you doing in my room? What? Excuse me? Who are you? This is my room. This guy was totally crazy. He insisted this was his room, even though I picked the key up from reception just two hours ago. What do you mean you got the key? I checked in first and just left the key at the reception desk to go out and buy some stuff. Whatever. I like the beach view here, so I'm staying. Unbelievable! Then he pulled out his phone and called reception. Okay. So, I'm Liana, and I'm in the tropical paradise of Bali. My dream vacation wasn't off to a great start, thanks to this Charles guy trying to kick me out of my perfect beach view bungalow. Poof! Okay, now listen. They admit they gave you the wrong key. He pointed at his phone. Now, go back to reception, get the right one, and they'll probably give you a free treatment in the spa or something as compensation. No chance. I frowned at him. I like this room. How about you leave and go and enjoy a free spa treatment or whatever? Hell no! He growled at me. I paid for it, so I'm staying put. After that, we continued to quarrel until I felt a pain in my chest. And the next thing I knew, I'd fainted. Ugh. I guess it was just far too hot here for arguing. He put a pillow under my head and said, Miss, you can stop pretending now. Wake up! I had a feeling he was staring at me, but I didn't move. Fine. Keep on playing your little pretend games. 
but I'm not leaving this room either. Ah, oh, silence. He must have given up. But then I felt a weight next to me on the bed. Without a second thought, I opened my eyes and leaped off the bed. Oh, turns out he wasn't trying to harm me. Instead, he was just sitting on the side and opening his laptop. Oops. He rolled his eyes, told me to go, and then started typing away. I swished my hair back, then said, In your dreams? Now, I'm off to enjoy this sunny day. When I come back, I don't want to see your face. After that, I left and spent the rest of the day relaxing on the beach. Bali was just so beautiful. At night, I returned to the bungalow and was ready to fall into bed. Hello, I said as I walked inside. Whoa, he wasn't there. I'd won the Battle of the Bungalows. I used the last of my energy jumping up and down on the bed and singing out, He left, I win, he's a loser, I'm a winner. Then I curled up into bed and started to drift off. Smash! I jolted upright. The window had been broken, and lingering at the foot of my bed was a tall, dark figure. I screamed at the top of my lungs, but they lunged forward and covered my mouth with their hands. Shut up, they whispered in my ear, then pulled their mask off. It was Charles. Confused, I blurted out, What the? Why did you break the window? Quick, grab your things. I pushed him off me and sat there with folded arms. Nice try, but if this is your way of kicking me out, it won't work. I'm not leaving. Suddenly, another man entered the room. Charles placed his mask back on and quickly grabbed the lamp from the bedside table and threw it at the man. I grabbed my bag in a panic while Charles took something from his backpack and then he led me out of the room. We took the back road out of the bungalow and headed into the forest. Where are we going and who is he? I questioned, but he remained silent. Say something. What's going on? Shut up for a minute. Now, I'll take you to the airport to leave this island. Charles grumbled. It was pitch black, and I was trampling through the forest in flip-flops. Ugh! Then, to make it even worse, I tripped over a branch and busted my knee. Great! He lowered his back and said, Get on. I was a bit surprised at first. Hmm, maybe he wasn't as mean as I first thought. After a while, he decided we should rest in the forest till dawn. Charles fell asleep the second he hit the ground. I couldn't sleep, and then I thought back on the incident in the bungalow. Thinking about it... I remembered Charles grabbing something from his bag. So I crept over to him and slowly reached for his pocket to see what it was. Suddenly, he grabbed my arm tightly. Charles, let me go! I hissed out. My arm started to hurt. Ouch! Look, this is a dangerous business I'm in, he said as he let go of me. I'm trying to keep us both safe. Okay, I could really see worry in his eyes, so I muttered out, fine, and rubbed my arm. After a ridiculously uncomfortable night of zero sleep, he nudged me at dawn and told me to start walking. He took my hand and led me forward. I guess it was nice that he was so focused on protecting me, but, er, why did he keep looking at his phone? Um, are we lost? I asked. He kept his eyes on the screen and shook his head. Then he led me into the other direction, and then another. Yep, we were so lost. After what felt like hours of walking in circles, I slumped down on a rock and pulled a water bottle out of my bag. Let's just find the hotel, I suggested. No, we can't. Going back is more dangerous. But, fine. Can you at least tell me why we're sweating our butts off out here? I suppose I've implemented you, he sighed out. Still, you have to take this to your grave. I won't tell, promise. Through after this, he took a USB stick out of his pocket. The president of the company I work for is carrying out illegal activities, and this is proof. Whoa, you're like James Bond! I smiled as I passed him the water bottle. Hardly. He laughed.
Then he thanked me as he took the water and drank half of it without hesitation, then offered me the rest. He told me he was working for another company and had been sent in to investigate. So you're betraying the president? I asked skeptically. Kind of. Yes. By the way, I know you just wanted a nice vacation, but I've accidentally dragged you into this mess. I'm so sorry. Don't worry. I guess this is kind of exciting. But this is the summer getaway with the most insects I've ever had. I swatted a mosquito away. I heard him laugh, but hang on. Why was he all blurry? I slurred out. Uh, is your head heavy? Then I saw him faint in front of me, and a few seconds later, the world turned black. I flickered open my eyes. My head hurt. I was tied to a chair. And so was Charles. There were some scary-looking guys staring at us. Oh no, this couldn't be good. One man walked over to Charles and in a stern tone said, Charles, hand over the USB and no one gets hurt. I don't know anything about a USB, he muttered out. I don't want to give out threats with her here, but if you insist... One of the bodyguards walked towards me, grabbed my hair, and pulled it backward. If you don't find value in her life, just keep it and watch her die. Stop! Leave her out of this! I don't have the USB. I dropped it somewhere in the forest. Then he turned to me. I'm so sorry I got you into this. The man sneered. Stop being so emotional, Charles. It doesn't suit you. I was shaking with fear as the man pulled something out from his back and pointed at me. Last chance, Charles? He shouted out, No! It's in her pocket! He must have snuck it in there when we were in the forest. Did he really believe that I would escape and expose the evidence? Then... <laughs> Cut! Good job, guys! We should be nominated for an Oscar award after this. I joked while the men kneeled down and untied me. About time, I said snidely, as I took the USB out of my pocket and began spinning it with my fingers. I peered down at Charles and smirked. Thanks for protecting me and everything, but it turns out I have what I needed. What? Who are you? Charles asked in shock. So... I put him out of his misery and told him everything. Yeah, I'm the daughter of the company's president, the same said company that he stole top secret information from. My father asked me to go and find him. The wrong reception key was a setup, and my water bottle has a mild sedative in it. You don't understand. What your father did was illegal, he insisted. I rolled my eyes. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say. I started walking away. Please, see for yourself. Look at the USB. I chewed on my lip. Poor Charles. He was no match for me or my father. Soon, we'd all be on a plane and flying back to the US. And then he would pay for what he did. Well, that was a job well done. So now it was time to relax with a glass of champagne. After all, I deserved it. One simple extraction back home and my father's company would be saved, and daddy's little girl would get a pat on the shoulder for yet another job well done. Hooray! But I must say, I kind of pity Charles, being a pawn in somebody else's game. He was really nice, and clever too, but not enough to see all this coming, apparently. I took the USB out of my pocket and stared at it. But what secrets did my father keep? We didn't have anything fishy, right? My father did talk a lot about how hard he worked and how honestly he conducted himself. So why did he specifically ask me not to peek at the file? Hmm, a little look wouldn't hurt, right? I know, I know. It's not very good of me to disobey my father, but come on, I'm his daughter. I'm set to take over from him anyways. So consider this a double check, eh? Just to be sure. <gasps> 
I regret looking at that file. I truly do, as the truth was unbearable. It turns out, my father had been lying to me from the very beginning, so Charles was actually telling the truth. He was indeed stealing dirty secrets from my father to bring it to the light. Ironic, isn't it? I laughed at him for being so gullible and believed the lies about my father's company, while it was me who got lied to. These truths were hard to swallow. I bore the legacy of a lifetime of scamming and cheating. No, I didn't want to live like that. It was just so wrong. As I delivered both the USB and Charles to my father, I knew what I needed to do. So I held the USB out to my father and said, Daddy, I looked at it, so I now know everything. Please stop! Liana, so your father turned himself in and will be in jail for a while. So what do you plan on doing with the company? I was quiet for a moment. This was a big question. Should I continue with my father's business or put an end to it once and for all? I thought back to the day when I confronted my father. But princess, I did it all for you. It's your legacy. I don't want to live with dirty money, dad. You've always been my hero, but now I'm just ashamed of you. His face fell, and I saw the sadness in his eyes. Seeing my father like that was the worst feeling in the world. Then it looked like he realized something. My father quietly nodded, handed me the president of the company seal, and sadly left the room. I'm afraid that I would repeat my father's mistake. So, taking a deep breath... I looked the journalist directly in the eyes and assertively said, After careful consideration, I've decided to close the company. After the conference, I was on my way out of the building when Charles caught up with me and asked, Well, Liana, what will you do now? I shrugged. I don't know. I suppose anything is possible. Although, I do need a place to stay first. I can't return to mine. I can't bear it. Well, um, if you'd like, you could stay with me. Charles smiled at me. Yeah, I'd like that. Then grinning, I added, as long as you don't try to kick me out this time, or drag me through a forest. I hate what my father did, but in the end, he did own up to his crimes and is paying the price. As for me, I was just going to take one day at a time and see where life took me. And if that just so happened to involve a certain James Bond wannabe, then so be it. Hi everyone. Have you ever had someone get revenge on you? It's not fun, right? Well, this is my story about revenge, but with a twist. You won't believe who my prankster turned out to be. Oh, let me introduce myself. I'm Audrey, and I'm 24. To say I've had an unhappy life would be an understatement. Firstly, my dad ditched my mom for another woman. And not long after that, my mom passed away from a serious illness. Basically, my entire life fell apart in a matter of months, and I was still too young at that time. It was tough growing up, and I always think that my life could never turn the page again. But on one fine day, someone popped into my life and changed everything. His name was Jim, and he was seven years older than me, and he seriously turned my life around. He lived in another city, but he often came to my city on business trips. We fell for each other quickly. That happiness didn't last long, though. One day I was working in the clothes store when a girl around the same age as me came in. She wanted my help to choose some dress, but she was pretty rude to me, and I kept catching her staring at me with evil eyes. Who was she, and why was she treating me like that? Finally, after about two hours, she made up her mind and picked up only a tie that she wanted to buy for her husband instead. I was relieved to get rid of her, but shocked when I saw the name on her credit card. Jim Stewart. Her husband had the exact same name as my boyfriend. What a coincidence. She must have caught me staring at the card because she suddenly said, Yes, Jim is my husband. Now stay away from him. What? Her husband? My Jim. 
Before I even had a chance to react, she turned to everyone in the store and said, This girl is a gold digger, and she's trying to break up my marriage. I was shocked. I tried to explain that it wasn't true, but she wouldn't listen to me. She just stormed out, and I was left standing there hearing people whispering about me. It was the most humiliating moment of my life. I immediately ran to the staff room and called Jim. I was really hoping it had all been a big misunderstanding, but I could tell from Jim's tone that it was the truth. He told me he'd lied to me, and that he actually lived in the same city. He just made up the business trip stuff so he wouldn't have to see me often. Then he said, Audrey, I honestly love you. I'm serious about us. Hang on, was he for real? It was ridiculous. I was disgusted by him. How could he treat me like that? I hung up and felt horrified. It brought back horrible memories of the woman who stole my dad away from my mom. I didn't want to be that woman. The next day, I moved out of the house Jim had rented for me. I didn't want to be associated with that loser anymore. But life works in mysterious ways. The day I moved into my new house, I saw Jim's wife. And you won't believe it. It seemed that she just moved in next door too. Was this some kind of joke? As soon as she saw me, she smirked and said, Wow, what a coincidence. Hello, neighbor. I'm Linda. Seeing her unpacking her stuff all by herself, I couldn't help but wonder where Jim was. But then I thought maybe Linda had ended things with him and had moved here alone. I hope so anyways. I'd hate to have Jim as a neighbor. So that's when my new life began. And it has been crazy ever since. From that first week of living there, Linda started pranking me. It all began with her throwing trash into my yard. I even caught her doing it and she just grinned and said, Oops, my hand slipped. Then she walked away laughing. It made me furious. And that was just the beginning. One weekend, a delivery guy rocked up on my porch with 10 extra large pizzas. I tried to explain I hadn't ordered them, and that's when Linda appeared at my door and said, Oh, thanks for ordering me dinner, Audrey. I'm starving. Then she grabbed five of the pizzas and ran to her house, leaving me there with a bill of $100. Jeez, it was so annoying, and I had no option but to pay. Linda was too much. Seriously. As much as her pranks drove me up the wall, I also felt sorry for her. I knew what it was like to have someone you love stolen away from you. She must have hated me so much for ruining her marriage, even though it hadn't been my fault. I decided to just put up with her pranks. She'd get over it eventually, and it's not like they were harming me, right? Well, one night I heard the doorbell. I wasn't expecting anyone and was surprised to see a young guy standing there with a poster that said, I agree to be your boyfriend. Come out with me. I was totally puzzled and told him he had the wrong house, but then he showed me the address on the other side. It was my address. What on earth? I told him I wasn't interested, but he tried to grab my hand and said, Come on, girl, don't be shy. I told him if he didn't leave me alone, I'd call the police. So luckily he ran away. Needless to ask, I knew for sure that was Linda's joke. But this time she had taken it too far. I decided to go over and have a word with her once and for all. As I was walking to her house, I saw someone familiar on the other side of the road. I couldn't believe it. It was my dad? So many years had passed, and he'd completely changed. But there was no doubt it was him. I suddenly blurted out, Dad? But I didn't know what to do next. I was just thinking about my next move when I felt someone behind me. I turned around and saw Linda. She just smirked at me and walked away. What was her problem? Did she hear what I just said? I was so shocked at seeing my dad, I ran back into my house. I hated him for what he'd done to my mom. But he was still my dad, and I wanted to know if he was okay and what he was doing here. I barely slept that night, as I couldn't stop thinking about my dad. The next morning, I was sitting by the window when he appeared again. This time, he was with Linda, and she was holding his arm. What was she doing with my dad? Why were they so close? Later that day, I saw him again. And this time, he and Linda were hugging. OMG, were they dating? Maybe Linda had heard me call him dad. And now she was flirting with him to truly get revenge on me. This was too much. The thought of Linda as a stepmom made me want to puke. I waited and waited, but he was inside her house and there was no sign of him leaving. Eventually he left and as soon as he was in his car, I ran over to her house. I was shaking as I knocked on the door. And as Linda opened it, I said... You are way too much. Can you just stop with the revenge already? Linda looked confused and said, What the heck are you talking about? Linda still didn't seem to get it. And I was about to explain when I heard footsteps. I turned around and my dad was right there. He said, What's the matter, Linda? 
Why are you fighting with this stranger? Huh? Stranger? Didn't he recognize me? Then Linda butted in and said, It's okay, Dad. We're just having a misunderstanding here. What? Dad? Is he your dad? Really? I stammered. Yeah, why? What's the matter? She said. Linda, you don't need to lie to me. I know you're dating my dad to get revenge on me. I continued. Whoa, hold on. What do you mean your dad? Linda gasped. At that, my dad looked confused too and walked to me and asked if he could look at my hand. After seeing my birthmark, he started crying and hugging me. Audrey, it's you. It's really you. I didn't know how to react, so I just let him hug me. It had been so long since anyone had held me like this. Ever since my mom had died, I'd tried to be strong and keep it together, but suddenly I couldn't hold back anymore. I burst into tears in his arms. We stood like that for a long time, and eventually he took me into Linda's house and told me the story. It turned out, after he left me and my mom, he got tricked by that woman, and he was so ashamed, he decided to move to another city and start over. He was working hard on a construction site one day when he got injured, so he ended up in hospital. And that's when he met Linda. She'd been in a car accident and needed a blood transfusion urgently. She has a pretty rare blood type, but luckily my dad had the same type and he volunteered to give her a transfusion. After that, they became quite close, and seeing as Linda had lost both her parents in the car accident, my dad eventually adopted her. I couldn't believe it. My dad had been through so much, and this whole time, I thought he was off living his life with a rich woman. I felt so bad for him and decided to leave the past behind and forgive him. As for Linda, she was also left confused by this coincidence. So she left the room to process everything, while I and Dad took time to catch up on our lives. Later, Linda prepared dinner for us three. And before we digged in, she shyly grabbed my hand and said, Audrey, I've been so awful to you. I'm sorry. I know you aren't the one responsible for my divorce, but I still felt upset and that's why I played all those pranks. That was so childish, right? Please forgive me, sister. We laughed it off, then hugged each other to make peace. I couldn't believe it. After all these years of being lonely, suddenly I had a sister, and my dad was back. My life had finally turned a corner, and I almost laughed at the thought that it was all because of meeting Jim. At least one good thing had come out of that disastrous relationship. I'd just finished my shift and was walking out of the coffee shop to head home when I suddenly heard a voice say, Hi, are you Catherine Mill? Ugh, what else? I'm exhausted already. I reluctantly turned around to a view that almost made me leap out of my skin. Standing in front of me was a girl with a face exactly like mine. Who, who are you? I stammered. I felt like I was seeing things. She smiled at me and said, I'm Tracy. Is this wallet yours? Oh, wow, you found it. I dropped it at the Seattle Mariners baseball game. I never thought I'd see it again. That's right. We met there. Then Tracy took out a cap and put it on. Hang on. That hat seemed so familiar. And so did that smile. Um, are you the one I accidentally bumped into at the stadium? That must have been when I dropped my wallet. I was in such a hurry to get to my seat that I'd gone crashing into Tracy. At the time, she was wearing that cap, so all I saw was her smile. But now seeing her standing here, it was like looking in the mirror. I kept staring at her as she said, Yep, that was me. In fact, I came to find you not just to return your wallet, but because I need a favor. Can we chat for a sec? Um, sure. Let's go back inside the cafe. What favor could she possibly want? Well... I was about to find out. Catherine, I'm just going to say it outright. We have something in common, don't we? I hesitated to speak up, but I knew exactly what she was talking about. She then continued. I mean, look at us. You're basically my doppelganger, which brings me to this favor to ask for. Kathy, I was hoping you'd impersonate me. I'll pay you, of course. I'll pay you a lot. Before I could even reply, Tracy handed me an envelope and showed me a photo of some very posh-looking people. This is my family, she said. Wait, what? Turns out they were royals, or something close to. 
her grandfather had been an earl in the UK, and then they'd moved over here to Washington. They're what you'd call an aristocratic family. So, yep, mega wealthy. Must be nice, I thought. However, it was suffocating Tracy, and that all of the duties that came with being from a family of nobility drove her crazy. Plus, one other little problem. She was in love with a guy that her family definitely wouldn't approve of, because he came from a normal family. Her parents had arranged for her to marry the son of one of the country's richest CEOs. And so that's what led us to now. She wanted to hire me to pretend to be her, so that she could be with her lover boy without troubles. I was stunned. What if someone finds out? I muttered, and shoved the envelope back into her hands, saying that it was too much money. But Tracy just laughed. Oh, this is just the initial payment. You'll receive so much more. Please, I'm begging you. Think about it. Then she looked at me with proper sadness in her eyes. I really did feel sorry for her, but I needed some time. And it would be better to get my mom's opinion on this first. Ever since I'd been a little girl, I'd always talked things through with her. She was the only family I had, and the only one I could trust and rely on. Mom would know what to do. When I got home, I found my mom waiting for me at the table. We ate dinner together in silence, as I could barely focus. She knew something was up right away. Honey, what happened at work? I hesitated, then handed her the photo of Tracy's family. My mom, as you can guess, was shocked to see how much Tracy looked like me, and so I told her what had gone down earlier. I explained that she offered me a ton of money to impersonate her, but that it felt risky. I'd assumed my mom would be dead set against it, but what she said surprised me. That poor girl. Indeed, how people always say it's not as fun as it looks being too wealthy. But hey, a bit of extra money in your pocket couldn't hurt. I mean, you could use it to pay for your vocal training. And at the same time, you'd help Tracy, so that she can be with her true love. Yeah, becoming a singer had been a lifelong dream of mine. But because of money struggles, I'd had to put that aside. Mom's right. This was my chance. I had to take it, so I called Tracy to seal the deal. She was over the moon about it, and we arranged to meet the next day to start preparing. I thought I'd just have to learn all of her favorite things and maybe borrow some of her clothes so that I didn't get caught out. But no, there was a whole lot more to it than that. For starters, I had to take etiquette classes. Can you even believe? That first day, I had lessons on how to walk properly, they legitimately did put books on my head to improve my posture. And then came the elocution lessons to teach me how to speak more clearly. Seriously, was this Princess Diaries or what? But the best part, though, was her wardrobe. Wow, her outfits were to die for. Now that's what gave me the urge to dive into the royal life now. Everything was going well until we sat down to go through all of her likes and dislikes. Her dislikes were about a mile long. Oh man, Tracy was one fussy girl. I mean, who didn't like pizza? I basically lived off the stuff. Plus, she was vegan, gluten-free, and had a nut allergy. What did she even eat? But despite that, we got through the week. Every morning I had my etiquette classes, which now were easy peasy. I could totally pull it off as a high society girl. And then in the afternoons, I hung with Tracy and learned everything I could about her. By the end of the week, we got all things set and ready for the swap. So Tracy and I went out to celebrate. Catherine, look at our faces, she said while squinting her eyes. I took a closer look at the phone screen and gotta admit, despite being pretty identical, there were still some differences between us. Sure. Her cheekbones were more prominent, and her nose was slightly upturned, but with a bit of makeup, I could fix that, right? Tracy wasn't convinced, though. Listen, I think you're going to need to get plastic surgery. Wait, I wasn't ready for any of that. But on second thought, I guess that would be alright, as it'd only make me prettier, which would totally help with my singing career. So I went under the knife. Not only my nose and cheekbones were fixed, but they also added a birthmark to my shoulder to match the one Tracy had. 
I looked like an Egyptian mummy with all my bandages on, coming out of the operating room. But when the day came to remove them, I was amazed. Just a little touch-up could make me look this incredible. I twirled around in front of the mirror in one of Tracy's glitzy dresses and just smiled. We were totally going to pull this off. Tracy was even more excited than me. She turned to me and said, Ready for the family party? Oh, wow. So my first mission had arrived already. I nervously looked at Tracy, and she just giggled and said, Oh, don't be nervous. It's just my cousin's baby's first birthday party. No big deal. Although, Thomas's whole family will be there. That's the family I'm meant to marry into. Okay, now I was even more worried. Tracy told me to simply do what I learned in the classes. As for Thomas, she instructed me to just ignore him, as that's what she usually did. He was used to the cold shoulder. <laughs> well, the moment I arrived at the party, I was already so overwhelmed. I couldn't believe my eyes. Her cousin's house was basically a palace with butlers and a grand staircase as you entered, just like in the movies. I almost had to pinch myself that I was even there. As I walked in, one of the butlers asked me to follow him through to the banquet hall. A banquet hall? How insane! There were crystal chandeliers hanging from every part of the ceiling, and the room looked like it was literally made from gold. I noticed Tracy's dad standing in the middle of the room with a young couple and a baby. That would be Tracy's cousin, and the baby was obviously the reason this insane party had been thrown. I took a deep breath, gathered myself, and walked towards them in the way my etiquette teacher had taught me. I greeted them casually, and it seemed no one sensed anything weird. Not even Tracy's dad. However, I was still afraid someone would realize. So I grabbed a glass of wine and went to stand in the corner just to be safe. While I was fiddling with the glass and trying not to make eye contact with anyone, a guy came up to me and clinked my glass. Oh boy! The coolest, most handsome guy ever was standing there grinning at me. I smiled back at him politely, trying not to blush. And then I realized, wasn't he Thomas and Tracy, the happy couple? Suddenly, I heard Tracy's dad from a few feet away, speaking towards us. You two look exquisite together. Be good to him now, Tracy, won't you? Yep, it's Thomas, the fiancé that Tracy doesn't like at all. Okay, so I need to act cold towards him, otherwise I'll ruin everything for Tracy. But heck, he was just so good-looking. I quickly walked away towards the dessert table and started stuffing my face with some almond cookies, anything to distract myself from Thomas. As I picked up a third one, I heard Thomas scream, and the next moment he was running over to me shouting, Tracy, put it down! There are nuts in those! I dropped the cookie in shock. Right! I was supposed to be allergic to these delicious snacks! Totally forgot that. Gosh. I turned around to see all eyes were on me. This was a disaster. I was like a deer in the headlights. Didn't know what else to do. I pretended to faint. Thomas immediately carried me somewhere while others called the family doctor. I only took a peek when I felt like I was let down on a bed. And wow, even their guest room is gorgeous. Anyway, the doctor did some quick checkup and said I was okay. Well, obviously. Then Thomas rushed over, holding my hand and kept saying, Thank God you're okay, baby. Really? How come Tracy didn't like him? He was so sweet. He was looking at me so lovingly. Wait, at Tracy, actually. Oh boy, this was getting weird. Guess I have started off this mission on the wrong foot. But having that first incident actually helped me become more careful, so I've been getting better and better at playing Tracy. I was like a secret agent that would be summoned by duty at any sec. Sometimes you'd find me as a princess, other times I'd be waiting tables. My life was getting busier, but much more fun in some senses. Then one day, Tracy suddenly appeared at my door, looking all loved up. How strange it was. Usually she only contacted me over the phone. Then she said, Kathy, I have a big mission for you. As she sat down, she put a bulging envelope on the table and said, Kathy, sweetie, I need a big favor this time. 
So here's the thing. Me and Arnold are going to Asia for a month, and, um, I was wondering if you could maybe move into my house and cover for me? I was shocked. A month? Um, that's quite a long time. I mean, surely I'll get caught. Oh, I'm not sure, Tracy. I tried to avoid her eye contact, but she kept begging and looking like she was about to cry. Oh, God. What should I do? Guys, please give me some advice. And stay tuned. I'll be back with part two to tell you how things go down. <sighs> Why do I have uneasy feelings about all this? In part one of my story, I met my doppelganger, Tracy, who just so happened to be from a super wealthy, royal blood kind of family. We made a deal where I became her stunt double to stand in for her at boring royal parties so she could freely be with the love of her life that her family didn't approve of. It's just like a part-time job, which helped me earn some extra money to pursue my dream of being a singer. But then one time, Tracy came over and asked me to move into her mansion and play this princess act for an entire month while she's off to Asia with her boyfriend. That would need some serious thinking. How was I supposed to keep this up 24-7? I could already see myself getting so busted. Sensing my hesitation, Tracy pleaded again. Please, I'll give you whatever you want. This would mean so much for me and Arnold. You can do it, Kathy. We believe in you. She looked at me with those big puppy eyes. Oh no, what to do? At that exact moment, my mother walked out from the kitchen and said, You've been doing a great job so far, sweetie. I'm sure you'll pull it off this time, too. Don't worry. It'll be fine. Well, I couldn't say no now. So I gave Tracy a nod, which made her scream with happiness. Yay! You've made my day! Tomorrow, 3 p.m., I'll be waiting for you. Then she grinned at my mother. Thank you, Mrs. Mill. And so I moved in the next day. It was just me and Tracy's dad lived in this marvelous mansion. Yeah, as well as their butler and some dozens of housekeepers. You get the picture. Luckily, Tracy's dad was rarely home, so I basically had the place to myself. It was bliss. I didn't have to lift a finger. If I wanted a glass of wine, I just rang the bell and a glass would be waiting before I even put the bell down. One day, I felt like Mexican food, and they actually flew one of the top Mexican chefs in just to make me a burrito. I could seriously get used to this whole royal blood thing. However, there were a few moments where I totally messed up. One time, Tracy's dad had a day off, so we ate dinner together. I was so nervous that I totally forgot that Tracy was left-handed, and her dad noticed right away. Sweet pea? Since when are you eating with your right hand? I stammered, trying to make something up. Um, I've recently seen some research saying I should start using my right hand to train the left side of my brain too. Just experimenting, Dad. Oof, that was close. But it didn't stop there. Doris, the housekeeper, came into my room one day and joked, Tracy, when did you become so tidy? If I didn't know better... I'd say you had been replaced by a secret twin sister or something. I totally froze, trying not to let Doris know that she had just hit the nail on the head. I laughed it off. Oh, Doris, don't be so silly. It's me. Check my birthmark. <laughs> I was kind of bored and just thought I could clean it up a little bit. But it's even more boring. Ugh, it's all yours now. I passed her my unfolded blanket and swiftly left the room. Each close call like that reminded me to be more careful. But other than that, my new life was full of wonderful things. Especially when I had Thomas by my side. At first I tried to act as cold as possible towards him, just like how Tracy would normally treat this fiancé of hers. But tell me, how am I supposed to ignore such a perfect man? He often came to visit me or took me to places. He always gave me all these butterflies with his charm and elegant gestures. And it wasn't long before I realized I had feelings for him. I just couldn't help it. He made me so happy. 
One night, instead of having some fancy eight-course dinner date, I suggested we try something more casual. So we went bowling and grabbed some burgers. We had so much fun. And at one point, he took my hand and said, Thank you for opening your heart to me and giving me a chance to be your man. As he put a soda can ring on my finger. Come on, who wouldn't melt to that? And when he dropped me home, he leaned over to kiss me. Oh my god! My heart was thumping in my chest as I got out of the car. Then he said, Good night, my darling Tracy. Suddenly, reality came crashing down. I had been delusional. It was Tracy that Thomas loved. Not me. Not poor old Kathy. But it's too late now. I'd been so carried away with my own feelings that I didn't realize how my behaviors towards Thomas had been taken as a green light. Both families were super stoked that Tracy finally showed some positive signals towards this relationship, and they started planning the wedding right away. The date was set for two weeks later. Then the plan was for us to move to Singapore for Thomas's work. I was so shocked at how fast everything was moving. This was a disaster. I called Tracy and told her everything. She also freaked out and told me to stay calm and just wait for her. She'd get back before the wedding day to stop it. Well, the wedding day was fast approaching and there was still no sign of Tracy. I was really panicking now. And the worst part was that I couldn't get a hold of her. Her phone was off. I didn't know what to do. I cried to my mom over the phone, so she tried to calm me down. Honey, I think if you leave now, you'll mess everything up. If Tracy's family finds out, you'll both be in trouble. Hang on a bit more. I'm sure she'll be back and everything will be okay. But that means I have to go through with the wedding and then move to Singapore with him. I can't do that, Mom. Why not, sweetie? I know you love him. And so far, no one has spotted a difference between the two of you. Just keep pretending for now, okay? So that's what I did. I kept pretending. While everyone prepared for the wedding of the year, I paced back and forth waiting for Tracy to get back. One day, I was out in the garden, trying to ease my mind, when someone approached me. He looked so familiar, and I wondered if it was Arnold, Tracy's boyfriend. But what was he doing here? He asked me to follow him so that no one would see us. And then he seemed angry and said, Tracy, why didn't you tell me you were back? I was so worried when you disappeared like that. Huh? Wasn't Tracy supposed to be with him? Arnold, calm down. I'm not Tracy. I'm Kathy. But Tracy has disappeared? I haven't been able to contact her either, and I've been worried sick. Oh, hey, Kathy. Gosh, you two are identical. Arnold looked disappointed. Anyway, we came back a few days ago, and she wanted to swing by your mum's place to give us some presents. Then I haven't seen her since. That's weird. My mum would have mentioned if she swung by. Yeah, I've asked her, but she hadn't seen Tracy either. Kathy, we need to find her. So I immediately cancelled my wedding dress fitting and went with Arnold to my house. Hey, Mom, it's me! I called out, but there was no answer. We searched the house, but couldn't find her anywhere. Then, as we passed my room, I could hear someone inside, and the door was locked. That was so odd. So I rushed to get the spare key to open it, and got the fright of my life. Tracy was sitting on my bed. I almost screamed. What are you doing here? Tracy looked as shocked to see us as we were to see her. I don't know why your mom locked me in here, but don't worry. She didn't hurt me. I'm being fed well and I have Netflix, so it's not all bad. No way. My mom would never do such things. She was the sweetest woman, and this was so out of character. Then I heard footsteps on the stairs. It was my mom. I screamed. Mom, could you please explain? What's going on here? She looked at me and stammered. I... I just plan to keep her here for a few days. Just until you married Thomas and flown to Singapore with him. Are you insane? Do you want me to steal her life? No, sweetie, it's not stealing. It should 
have been your life. I mean, why didn't he recognize his own daughter? At this, she burst into tears and fell to the floor. Arnold rushed over and helped her up and said, What do you mean, his own daughter? And that's when my mom told me that Tracy is actually my half-sister. What? So Tracy's dad was my dad too? Turns out, when my mom had fallen pregnant with me, Tracy's dad's family hadn't approved because my mom was just a normal person. So they'd paid her to move to another city and stay away from dad. But what's even worse is that my dad didn't even try and look for us after that. In fact, a few months later, he'd already married Tracy's mom who came from a rich family. Both Tracy and I stood there completely shocked. No wonder we looked so similar. So, you're my sister? I gasped, staring at Tracy with wide eyes. Really? Dad did that? What a selfish, arrogant man! I'm ashamed to even be related to him! I'm going to give him a piece of my mind! The truth needs to be told! No, Tracy, wait! Don't do that! My mom yelled. Sorry, but I have to! I can't play this game anymore! I have a plan! At that, Tracy walked off and Arnold ran after her. Here we go, I thought. And eventually, the wedding day of Thomas and Tracy rolled around. Me, my mom, and Arnold showed up in disguise. When the vicar asked them both to say I do, Thomas said it immediately. But Tracy paused. The whole church held their breath waiting for her I do, but it never came. Instead, she said, I can't do this, Thomas. I'm sorry. That's when Arnold appeared, and Tracy ran towards him and held his hand. This man, he is the true love of my life. Of course, Tracy's dad was furious. He got up from his seat and yelled in front of everyone, What on earth is going on? And that's the moment when I felt so proud of Tracy. She said, I don't love Thomas, Dad, and he deserves to be with someone who truly loves him back. That's what marriage is about, right? It should be based on love, not status or money. And anyway, I don't want to hurt someone the way you did. What are you talking about? Who did I hurt? He looked stunned. Um, my mom, Kathy's mom, and Kathy herself, too. Tracy pointed over at me and my mom. Everyone in the church gasped as they looked from Tracy to me and back again. We really were identical. He looked like he was going to faint when he saw my mom. And then with a shaking hand, he pointed to me and said, And who is this? My mom walked towards him and said, This is Kathy, your daughter, the one you abandoned. Wow, I didn't think my mom had it in her. Honestly, the tension in the air was crazy. People started whispering and shuffling in their seats. That was when Thomas said, So, which one of you is Tracy? I decided this was my moment to speak up. I'm not Tracy. I'm Kathy. I've been taking her place during the past month. I'm so sorry for lying to you this whole time. I couldn't even look him in the eyes, as I put in his hand the soda ring that meant so much to me. Thomas looked disappointed and marched off. I ran after, trying to stop him, but he didn't care. Only, when I tripped and fell to the ground, he turned around to say, Why would you do this? Giving me false hope? And for what? Honestly, it would have been better if you'd treated me the way Tracy the Ice Queen does. I'm sorry, Thomas. I didn't want to hurt you. My feelings for you are real. I started to cry. You're so selfish, Tracy. Oh no, wait. I mean, Kathy. Then he walked off. In the end, the wedding was obviously cancelled. Tracy's dad, or should I say, our dad, had no choice but to accept Tracy and Arnold's relationship. I was so happy for her. Dad, of course, also apologized to me and Mom, and even offered me to come and live with them. But I refused. I wasn't about to leave my mom. However, I did accept his offer to pay for my vocal training. At least, I could live this dream of mine. 
because I doubted I could make my other dream come true. My dream to see Thomas again. I was heartbroken. Still, I had to get on with life. Maybe I'd meet someone else. Pretty soon, it was time to graduate from my first semester of vocal training, and I was going to have my first ever solo performance to an audience. I was so nervous, but I sang with all my heart. And afterwards, as I left the theater, someone ran up to me with a giant bouquet of flowers. Unbelievable! It was Thomas! I burst into tears and he said, Hi, Kathy. I'm Thomas. Nice to meet you. That put the widest smile on my face. I then ran into his arms saying, It feels so good to hear you call me by my real name. Yes, I'm Kathy. I know we just met, but will you be my boyfriend? And you guessed it. The rest is now history. We are currently planning our wedding. For real this time. And I've honestly never been happier. Hey, I'm Callie. I'm almost 16, but I could live in peace only in the first two years of my child's life. Until my little brother, Ethan, came along and ruined everything. I always hoped that that little brat had never been born. And if you're the oldest sibling like I am, then chances are you'll feel the same way as I do. Firstly, his birth meant that my parents barely noticed me anymore. Yeah, I know I was two back then, so I don't actually remember this, but as the years passed by, I saw how it was. I got into trouble for dumb things because I was the oldest, while Ethan got away with everything because he was too young to understand. Ugh, I really hate my brother. And I could tell tons of reasons for that. We always fought over the last slice of pizza. When he got it, he'd eat it open-mouthed in front of me, and Mom would smile and say, Ah, oh, my growing boy. But when I got it, Mom would frown at me and say, Callie, don't be greedy. Ugh! He'd sneak into my room and took the plushy bunny my bestie gave me and super glued its ears together. So I took his switch and hid it in the basement. It took him an entire week to find it. Ha! <laughs> in revenge, he smeared chocolate over the back of my pants. I only realized what was going on when other kids started laughing and pointing at me. I had to wear my sweater tied around my waist for the rest of the day, even though it was freezing. So, I retaliated by rubbing stinging nettles on his pillow. The next morning, his face was bright red and he couldn't stop itching. It was so funny. It was also a photo shoot day. So much to his protests, a makeup artist spent ages applying makeup on him to cover up the redness. He looked so ridiculous. <laughs> You see, my dad's a politician, so sometimes we have to appear in photo shoots where we look like a loving, harmonious family. Pfft. As if. I could play pretend for the cameras, but in reality, I really just wanted to kick my brother's butt. We just didn't get on at all. He's such a brat. So, I guess pranking each other was our coping strategy. I mean, hey, it isn't easy living with someone you hate. Our pranks happen so often that our parents just let us get on with it. However, there is one thing Ethan is terrified of. It all started back when he was eight, and Dad was watching The Walking Dead. Me and Ethan walked into the room just as there was a zoom-in scene in which a zombie was having a feeding frenzy. Being the brave girl, I thought it was interesting and sat down and watched it with Dad. But my bro, being the wuss, he screamed, then ran out of the room, hid under our parents' bed, burst into tears, and refused to move for two hours because he was convinced that at the sight of that zombie, he knew he must be chosen, and zombies were going out to get him. Gotta Achilles heel. So, not long after that, when he dropped my brand new headphones down the toilet, which made me have to put my hand in to pick it up, I decided to get revenge on him. And luckily for me, Halloween was just around the corner. Perfect. I binge-watched makeup tutorials on YouTube and practiced on my friends. Then on Halloween, I turned myself into a seriously scary zombie, hid the video camera in his room, got into his closet, and made grumbling and moaning sounds. When he opened the closet door, I jumped out at him and tackled him to the floor. OMG! He screamed so loudly and he actually peed his pants. And now, all these years later, I still have it on video to torment him with. Ha! But don't be fooled, as my brother was not your average kitty. It wasn't that long ago that he played a prank on me, which made me madder than Misty from Pokemon. 
So I had a crush on this boy from school. He was just so sweet and dreamy. And from the cute glances he kept on giving me, I was 100% sure he liked me too. Valentine's Day seemed like the perfect day to express my feelings toward him. So I stayed up until midnight the night before making chocolate for him. I left my chocolates lovingly wrapped and boxed on the side in the kitchen and went to bed. The next day, I grabbed the box and at lunchtime, I handed it to my crush. To my utter dismay when he opened it, instead of the lovely heart-shaped chocolates I'd spent hours making, there were embarrassing childhood pics of me, including a photo from when I was 12 with a bunch of hideous pimples on my face. One of me as a toddler sleeping with my mouth open and saliva drool on my chin, and one of me as a baby with a bowl of food mush on my head. Then my crush lifted up a note saying, Great chocolate, sis. That sneaky brat. Although my crush kept saying that I looked really cute in those photos and he liked them even more than chocolates, I still wanted to give that brat a hard punch right in his annoying face. Oh God, I'm begging you, please take him away from me. I'll be good. I'll do my homework on time and I'll stop borrowing mom's expensive perfume. Okay, so this may have been my wish, but I never expected that it would come true. It was a normal evening around the dinner table. Ethan was glued to his phone, and Mom got really annoyed and made him clear up the table. While he was doing that, I saw a message pop up on his phone from someone called Sophie, saying, Okay, I'll see you in the front of the cinema at 8 p.m. I'm looking forward to it, smiley face. What? Ethan had a date? Oh, my sweet little bro. It was payback time for ruining my crush's chocolates. So I stealthily followed Ethan to the cinema. Because the cinema was pretty close to our home, we both walked. He cut through the park. Jeez, it was creepy at this time. I swear the trees looked like monsters. Anyway, I saw something light up by my feet. I picked it up. It was Ethan's phone. What an idiot. I was so going to make him work hard to get this back. As I walked out of the park, I saw a black van parked nearby. Suddenly, I heard a scream and saw two giant men trying to drag Ethan toward the back of the van. Ethan was crying and struggling with fierce resistance, but my weak, skinny 14-year-old brother was no rival for those two men. What? How dare they try and kidnap my brother? He might have been the most annoying human on the planet, but he was my annoying little brother. There's no way I was letting this happen. I rushed forward and shouted, Ethan, zombie mode on! My presence startled the two kidnappers, and this made them more intent on dragging him toward the van when all of a sudden, Ethan bit down hard into the hand of the man who was covering his mouth, just like how zombies always do. Good one, bro. The man wept out and shook his hand. The other man pulled on Ethan's arm, but he managed to scramble to his feet. As the man tried to push him into the van, Ethan sought his opportunity and kicked him right between his legs. Ouch. While this was going on, I called the cops and told them to be quick. Then I saw the jerk with the bitten hand about to grab Ethan again. So I screamed out loud, Ethan, run! He sprinted off into the park and the bitten man followed him. It was exactly a real-life zombie chase. Huh. Suddenly, I felt arms grab me around the waist. Oh no, it was the other guy. He said, I guess you'll have to go too. Before he lifted me up and carried me over to the back of the van. I screamed out and tried hitting and kicking out, but he was too strong. He threw me into the back of the van before he could get in. I smashed the van door and quickly locked the door from the inside to knock him out. Lucky for me, not him, but the guy chasing Ethan was the one who was keeping the key. It was so scary when the kidnapper kept shouting at me outside, but I was even more frightened thinking Ethan could get hurt somewhere out there. Then suddenly I heard his voice. Hey, stop. Did he get caught? I looked out to see the contrary. He was running towards me after two police officials. They were holding their guns to control the guy standing by the van. Ethan was safe and came back for me. I opened the door and jumped into his arms. Oh, let's skip this part. I get goosebumps every time I recall this weepy situation. Me and Ethan followed the cops and saw the other kidnapper handcuffed to a tree, fighting with mosquitoes with his one free arm in the dark. The police told me that during the way heading to the van, Ethan kept on complaining about how slow and unprofessional they were as they should come to save me first instead. My boy still stubbornly said, I could run myself, but this wimp couldn't. The idiot definitely couldn't have imagined that he has a Wonder Woman big sister like me. <laughs> Our parents rushed into the police department to see us. And yep, weepy part again. 
Turned out my dad's rival had hired the guy to kidnap Ethan so that they could use him to blackmail my dad. I don't clearly understand the whole situation. Maybe after this I'll watch more political movies. But now, thanks God, we're safe. I may have wished my brother would disappear, but when I actually could have lost him forever, well, I have to admit that it really freaked me out. And it turns out he felt the same way about me too. Crazy, huh? Of course, we still play pranks on each other. We wouldn't be us if we didn't. But I realized something. He might be the most annoying brat ever, but he's still my family. And I love my family so much. However, I'm pretty sure there'll still be times when I hate my annoying little bro. Like right now, while I'm sitting in my room telling you my story, I'm sure I can hear him giggling outside of my door. What's the betting I open it and end up with a bucket of cold water on my head or something? All this may because I have told my mom he has a girlfriend. Tough luck, little bro. There's no way you're getting the better of this pranking queen. My name's Mary. I'm 20 years old, and I grew up with a very strict and religious mother. Every Sunday during church, I would say the same prayer to God. Please, God, help my mother to change into a different person to make my life easier and more comfortable. I never actually expected God to answer my prayers, but then something completely unexpected happened. Living with my mother wasn't easy for Dad and me. She was very strict and always had her ridiculously high standards. As a result of this, she gave us both a long list of daily house chores and she could turn from a well-tempered woman into a monster at the slightest thing. Once, when I was dusting, I accidentally smashed one of her beloved cat ornaments and she locked me in my bedroom for a full day. Another time, Dad forgot to take the trash out, so she emptied it into his briefcase. Mom also liked to have us live by her rules. Dinner was at 7 p.m. prompt. Bedtime was at 9.30 p.m. with no room for adjustment. And under no circumstances was I allowed to ever go out with a boy. I mean, come on, I'm a 20-year-old girl! I started dating this guy called Ben in secret. He's such a kind, caring guy, but I knew Mom wouldn't see it that way. So when I went round to his, I had to pretend to her that I was meeting friends. It was difficult having to lie to Mum, and it sucked that I couldn't stay over at his place. I was a grown woman, but Mum made me feel like I was still a little girl. As much as Dad and I loved Mum, her strict rules and temper were getting to us. One time, I overheard Mum yell at Dad, You're a useless old fool and I don't know why I married you! I walked into the kitchen to find Dad sighing deeply while staring blankly into space. Turns out, her outburst was all because he'd made toast with the bread Mum was saving for sandwiches. I felt so bad for him, so the next time I was at church, I said my usual prayer to God. I never expected Mum to actually alter her ways, but then everything changed 180 degrees after the terrible accident. My mum had a serious car crash in which the airbag didn't pop out in time. She bumped her head hard and ended up in a coma. Seeing mum lying there unconscious and helpless was horrible. I prayed to God for her to wake up, even if it meant putting up with her strict rules. I actually believed that she was in this state because of me and my evil prayers. But then, a miracle happened. After three whole agonizing months, my mother woke up. Thank you, God, for answering my prayers again. Only, my mother was looking at me like I was a complete stranger. Then she said to me, Sweetie, do you go to my school? As you look familiar. Huh? What was going on? Then, when she saw her reflection in the mirror, she screamed and said, How am I so old? This mirror's broken. The doctor ran some tests. Turns out, Mom lost all her memories that happened after she was 18. So, in my mother's mind, she's still an 18-year-old schoolgirl. Having a mother with the mindset of a teenage girl was, well, difficult. We had to decorate the spare room with a load of posters of bands from the 80s I've never heard of before. We had to teach her what a laptop was and show her how to use the cooker. Also, she never cleans anymore, and she even steals my clothes! My dad now works a lot, and I'm stuck playing mum to my mum! I once caught her trying to sneak out in my miniskirt and tie-dye t-shirt, and I folded my arms and scowled at her. You're not going out dressed like that. She got so mad with me and sulked off to her room. OMG. I just realized I was becoming my mother! 
But she did look ridiculous. She's a 45-year-old woman, not some teenaged girl. But after the initial shock of my mother acting like a completely different person, I began to warm to her. She was funny, super curious, and most importantly of all, she didn't care about rules. Although one time my cell rang, this startled her so much that she grabbed it and threw it in the sink. Yeah, I wasn't overly impressed, but I guess it was kind of funny. She just didn't understand this world anymore. The one thing I did enjoy was having pamper evenings with her. She put scrunchies in my hair and helped me put my mask on. Then we chatted for hours about school, mean girls, and cute boys. Yeah, so, okay, talking about boys with my mom was weird, but it felt like this wasn't my mom at all, but someone new entirely. Then she asked me if I had a boyfriend, and I nodded without hesitation. Now I can comfortably talk about him without being afraid of her judgment. I told her, Ben is so cute, polite, mature, and very talented. And he's so good with technology. Oh, he sounds swell, she smiled. Um, could you invite him over to show me how to use that face what's it thing on the computery thing? I replied, sure, ma- Um, I mean, sure, Wendy. This was great! Now, not only could I be open about having a boyfriend, but now instead of feeling afraid of mom, I was friends with her. Ben came over and helped mom out with the computer and things. I mean, she still seemed completely puzzled by it all, but he seemed so chilled around her, even when she picked up the laptop and began to shake it in an attempt to get it to turn on. Um, yeah, the on button helps. I left them to it and went to get orange juice, but then I walked back into the room to see her brushing her fingers through his hair. When she saw me, she quickly pulled her hand away, and I was left wondering if I imagined it. But then later on, when we were watching a movie, she made a big deal of sitting next to him. Did my mom have a crush on my boyfriend? No, surely not. But then, after Ben left, mom said, That Ben is so handsome. Unlike that old man that also lives here, he has terrible dress sense and smells like cod liver oil tablets. This shocked me. Poor dad. I guess it was a good thing he was working away so much as I don't think he could have dealt with mom being like this. Then, a few days later, mom invited Ben over for dinner to thank him for helping her. At that point, I thought that maybe I was just too skeptical. My mother may be childish and impulsive, but she would never be her daughter's rival, right? While I was cooking in the kitchen, the two of them were laughing non-stop in the living room. They told each other endless stories, and it was annoying that my mother kept praising him and jumping up and down like a kid. I had to put on headphones and try to focus on cooking so I didn't have to hear those ridiculous sounds. But when I finished prepping dinner and took off my headphones, the house was strangely quiet. Where did they go? I walked out into the living room to the most horrifying sight. While Ben was trying to focus on the computer screen, my mother was sitting next to him on the sofa, her hands all over him. What the heck? Her hand was moving downwards and touching his thigh. Stop! I shouted. Startled, Ben stood up. That's when I noticed sweat drenched his shirt. He stuttered out, I, I didn't do anything. Your mother. And then he ran away. Needless to say, about my mom, she didn't look embarrassed at all. On the contrary, she turned to me and moaned out, Thanks a lot, Mary. You scared off my date. I went crazy threw a mirror at her, and told her to have a long, hard look at herself. She screamed back at me that Ben loved her because of her soul, not her age or appearance. And you know what? My mom and Ben are now texting each other. I don't know what's more shocking, that my mom's trying to steal my guy, or that she actually figured out how to text. Ben showed me some of the messages, and they're so bad, I actually thought I was going to vomit. One message said, Please, Ben, I want to meet up in secret and kiss you and things. Mary never needs to know. Ben explained to me that he didn't know what to do. He says he loves me and never wants to risk losing me, but he didn't want to be rude to my mom as he knew she wasn't herself. Poor Ben having to deal with all this. From now on, I'm keeping Ben and my mom apart. So I've gone from having a secret boyfriend to having a mom who wants to kiss my boyfriend. My life is crazy. Please, God, I don't recognize my disciplined, strict mother anymore. And as challenging as it was to be around her, I miss her, and I just want her back.
Everyone talks about how Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year, full of love and cheer and surprises. Well, last Christmas, our family got the biggest surprise of all. I'm Grace, and Christmas has always been my favorite holiday. That was until one year when everything changed. At the time, I was only 10, and my little sister was 3. It was Christmas Eve, and we were all so excited as it had snowed. That meant we were going to have a white Christmas. But suddenly, I heard loud voices. Our parents were fighting. I didn't know it at the time, but my dad had been having an affair, and my mom had just found out. I came downstairs just in time to see my dad slamming the door and driving away. Mom was in tears and told me to run back upstairs and pack a bag for me and my sister. Then we drove to my aunt's house, and the three of us stayed there that night. We woke up on Christmas morning, and because Mom is a nurse, she had to go to work as she was on duty that day. We opened our presents, and then me and my sister went outside to play in the snow. Suddenly, our dad appeared, and we were so happy to see him. He had presents, and he asked us to quickly jump in the car with him so we could go home to see what Santa had brought us. I remember he smelled kind of funny, and I thought he must have forgotten to bathe, but it was the smell of alcohol. He'd been drinking all night and was completely over the limit. As we drove away, our aunt came running out, but it was too late. We were on our way home. It happened so quickly, I barely remember it. We must have crashed because the next moment, the car was skidding to the side of the road and me and my sister were screaming. Dad had been so drunk, he ended up crashing into two cars and injuring four people. Luckily, me and my sister were okay but dad wasn't. He ended up going to prison, and he wasn't allowed to see us anymore. My mom went crazy when she found out, and she wouldn't even let us see him in prison. We were too young to really understand, but we just knew we weren't going to see our dad again. A couple of years ago, I asked mom about him, and she said he'd gotten out of prison and moved across the country, and that she didn't want to talk about it, so I never mentioned him again. And then my mom met a new guy named Neil, and I guess I like him, but I miss my dad a lot. Then Christmas came around, and it brought back all those memories. Mom always acted a little emotional on the day, and last year was no different. It hadn't snowed since that Christmas, but when we woke up on Christmas morning, my little sister came bouncing into my room to tell me it had snowed. We raced downstairs and started to put on our coats and our shoes. Even though I was 15, I couldn't resist a good old snowball fight. Afterwards, we opened our gifts, and Mom was really quiet. The snow obviously reminded her of what happened that Christmas with Dad. We spent the rest of the day watching movies and playing with our gifts, and then we sat down to enjoy dinner. We'd almost finished eating when the doorbell rang. My little sister went to open it. Who is it? I asked her, expecting it to be our aunt or something but you won't believe who was standing there. It was Santa. Okay, so I know he's not real, but my little sister freaked out. Mom, Santa's here, she screamed. Mom came running towards the door with her boyfriend running behind her. We were all so confused. He had a bag of gifts and just stood there not saying anything. My sister was so excited, and she led him through to the lounge and offered him a glass of milk and some cookies. I just looked at Mom and shrugged my shoulders. He sat down and opened his bag. Then he handed me and my sister a gift. Mom kept saying there's no need for gifts, and I could hear Neil whispering to her, Who is this guy? But my little sister had already unwrapped it and was squealing with joy. He'd got her the exact video game console she wanted. Mom was shocked. And then I opened mine, and it was the latest iPhone. Whoa, thank you so much, I said. I could barely believe it. Sorry, who are you? My mom finally asked, but he didn't reply. He just started whistling jingle bells and looked kind of awkward. And then Neil said thank you to him and asked him to leave. Suddenly, he got up and just ran out. My sister tried to run after him, but he was too quick. Seriously, who was he? The rest of the evening was a little strange, and we were all so confused. My mom thought maybe my aunt had planned this and decided to ask her later when she came over. Neil went to pick her up, and as soon as he drove off, the doorbell rang. It was Santa, again. 
He said, sorry, I forgot I had one last gift in my bag, and then he handed it to my mom. As soon as we heard his voice, we realized who it was. Daddy? I said. He took off his Santa hat and fake beard and just broke down, and suddenly we were all crying. Up until that moment, I don't think I'd realized just how much I missed him. Me and my sister ran into his arms, and Mom stood there silently sobbing behind us. She opened the gift, and then she started crying even more. It was a photo album of all of our memories together, up until that Christmas when everything went wrong. My girls, I'm so sorry. Please, please forgive me. I can't live another day without you all in my life. That Christmas ended up being the best Christmas of our lives. Our dad was back. We invited him to join us for dessert, and when Neil came back and found out who it was, he was furious, and so was my aunt. But me and my sister couldn't stop smiling. As for my mom, well, I think she was more shocked than anything, but it ended up being a magical day. Of course, my mom's boyfriend stormed off, but we were too distracted to really notice. Now we don't know what to do. Dad keeps contacting us and turning up at the door. I really want him back in our life, and it seems like Mom's falling back in love with him. She talks about him all the time, and every time he appears, she can't stop smiling. I mean, people change, right? Should we give him another chance? It was such a beautiful weekend, but instead of being out having fun, I was stuck at home. For what, you ask? To teach Excel to a girl who doesn't even know how to use shift key shortcuts. <sighs> what is the matter with you? I've explained the code 20 times to you already. Um, I... I'm sorry. Let's face it. You suck at this. Try to beat me in your dream. Ugh. If I had to waste one more second sitting next to her, I'd go crazy. Look how fake you are. If you're mad, then just show me. Why do you always have to be misfriendly? Hmm. Let me introduce you. That's Laura, my so-called sister. Two months ago, my mom brought her home and announced, Jeff, I have something to tell you. Back when we broke up for a while, due to your parents' hatred towards me, well... During that time, I found out I was pregnant. I gave birth to our little girl, Laura. I was only 22, and I had no money. So as much as it pained me to do so, I gave her away. I've never stopped thinking about her. And now, well, I've managed to find her. She dabbed at her teary eyes, then handed Dad the DNA test results. Dad was overwhelmed and ran over to hug Laura. They all cried a lot, and hugged a lot. As for me, I just stood there in shocked silence as I watched this family reunion take place. It all happened so fast. How was I supposed to believe that it was just a coincidence when Mom suddenly found her long-lost child after so many years? What now, Skylar? Stop being so headstrong. Mom scolded me, then rushed over to Laura and started cuddling her and soothingly stroking her hair. It's not my fault she has the learning capacity of a slug. Stop interfering, else I'll quit teaching her. By the way, those loving mother-daughter things also? Cut it off! It's ridiculous! I know what you're thinking. What's with the attitude towards my mom? The thing is, she's not even my real mom. A few months ago, something crazy happened to me. A strange woman showed up out of nowhere and claimed she was my mom. Say what now? Of course, I told her she'd got the wrong person. But when I saw the selling contract between my mom and her, I froze in shock. Turns out, my mom miscarried a child, but she was too afraid she'd lose her place in the family. So she bought me from this woman. So I was adopted. It's common, right? But still... I don't deserve to be treated like that. 
I had always been neglected since I was little. Mom never hugged or kissed me. She didn't read me bedtime stories or tuck me into bed at night. All she ever did was snarl at me. Go away! I guess I convinced myself that this was just how Mom was. But then Lara arrived, and Mom is totally different with her. <sighs> I get it now. I get why she treated me so cold, and why I've never felt happy despite growing up in a wealthy family. Because I'd never belonged here. After the incident with the woman, I confronted Mom about it. I get it. I know I'm not your real daughter, and that's why you think it's acceptable to treat me like garbage? Oh, please, stop with the dramatics. Let me tell you this. Even if you did adopt me, I'm still going to prove my efficiency to Dad and take over this company by myself. Mom was dumbfounded after hearing that. Then, not long after that, she turned up with Lara. That's why I didn't believe there was no coincidence. She brought Lara back to compete with me. And if that was true, then, what do I have to be scared of? <laughs> How are my two girls? Skylar, are you still helping Lara with her studies? Yeah, Dad. She still helps me every day. Thank you so much. Okay, that's great. When you move past the basics, I think you should take a few more extra courses. Do your best and try to follow your sister. There's no way she can be as good as me, not even in her wildest dream. Laura is very smart, and she'll soon be up to speed. I'm also teaching her more about our family business. Huh? Is Mom going to teach her more to compete with me? I can obviously see her greed and competitiveness. But whatever. Laura and I are at two distinctly different levels anyway. I am an excellent student at the Columbia Business School. Well, she's just an uneducated nobody. Poof, please. I have absolutely nothing to worry about. Mom kept forcing her to study, but... See? Speaking of mom, she'd been acting weird lately. One minute she treats me like a stubborn stain she can't get rid of, then the next she's trying to set me up with some guy named Dean. He's the son of her super rich colleague. I don't understand why she suddenly feels the need to find me a boyfriend. And dad wasn't helping the situation, as instead of telling mom to stop playing matchmaker, he was encouraging her. Ugh. Okay, I just wanted them to quit bugging me, so in the end, I agreed to talk to this Dean guy. But now, he won't stop messaging me, and he's even shown up at the house. Hmm, I suppose he is kind of handsome and nice, but he's not my type. So I just talked to him out of politeness. Until one time, I saw Lara sneaking a peek at Dean while he was waiting for me in the lobby. Wait, don't tell me she likes Dean? Oh well, she's welcome to my leftovers. I don't like this guy anyway. Then one day, I was walking along the corridor when I received a text from Dean. Skylar, are you free tomorrow? Let's have dinner together. I was about to text back when I suddenly heard Mom and Lara arguing. What's wrong with you, Lara? Why are you secretly dating that jerk? Why not, Dean? He's a good guy. Besides, he told me that there's nothing going on between him and Skylar. So Dean is two-timing us? He snuck out on a date with Lara while flirting with me on the phone all day? What on earth? I tried to keep calm while continuing to listen. You're crazy. Stop this stupid secret dating game at once. What? Why is Mom insisting he's a good guy to me, but telling Laura the opposite? Well, Mom, which one is it? Is Dean a good match like you told me, or a jerk like you told Laura? He's... he's rich! So keep on dating him, and stop bothering me with your nonsense! Ugh, I wasn't born yesterday. There's definitely something wrong with this Dean. The very next day, I decided to go and follow Dean. Oh my gosh, what was he wearing? And why did he go to this slum? Then he gathered with a few other thugs. So it's obvious, Dean definitely was a street guy. That's why mom didn't let Lara get close to him. But why did she match him with me? Could that be a part of her plan to bring me down? Ha, huh. nice try. <laughs> I'd had enough spying for one day. 
so I was about to leave. But then suddenly, I heard a familiar voice which startled me. I turned around, then... What? It's... Mom? How dare you ruin the plan? Mind your words. I did as you said. I told you to flirt with Skylar to distract her, not Laura. Don't think I'm paying you a nickel more. Fine, don't pay me. Just be sure to take me a picture of your husband's face when the real DNA result arrives in his inbox. <laughs> you, you, you! Oh my god. Did I just hear it wrong? What DNA results? Could it be? I immediately went home and rushed into my dad's office to look for the DNA certificate that my mom gave him that day. Here it was! What should I do now? That's right, I had to take it to the hospital to have it checked. After pleading and putting pressure on the doctor, he finally admitted that he'd accepted a bribe from... Dean! To fake the test result! I asked for the original one and... Believe it or not, Laura was not my dad's child. I immediately rushed home and showed my dad the original DNA results. He was so shocked, I had to help him sit down, then get him a glass of water. When he got over the initial shock, he asked me to call Laura and Mum in to confront them. But, oh no, Laura's room was empty. Only one letter was lying on the bed. Sorry, everyone. Dean told me the truth. Thank you all for taking care of me. Especially you, Skylar. I honestly enjoyed being around you. I think you're kind and patient. Please don't ever change. I don't belong in your world, so I can't stay. If we're predestined, we will meet again. Thank you, and sorry again. Love, Laura. Unbelievable! How could you lie to all of us about something like this? Knowing she couldn't wriggle out of this one, Mum replied, Okay, Laura isn't yours. I fell pregnant with her after we broke up. I didn't want you to throw me out, so I paid Dean to get a fake DNA certificate. Then I paid him again to date Skylar and distract her from her studies. This business should be Laura's, not hers. But that jerk went and fell for Laura instead. Poor Dad. He looked so heartbroken. Mom tried pleading with him to forgive her, but he told her the trust was broken, and that she had to leave. Everything's such a mess. Poor dad shut himself away in his office, while me, I lay on my bed, staring at the ceiling. I couldn't stop thinking about all of mom's lies. And what for? Money? Fame? Status? Are all those things worth sacrificing dignity, honor, and trust for? I used to want to compete with Lara, too. But now, it turns out that all of that was just fleeting. Dad, I think I should leave, too. Because I'm not your biological daughter, either. You... 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 I've known for a while. But I've kept quiet, as I was afraid that you would abandon me. Thank you for always being there for me. You're a good man, and you don't deserve all the pain you've been through. Then I told my dad all about how I found out I was adopted and how my mom paid my real mom to hand me over. Dad froze for a few seconds, then calmly said, Skylar, honey, you'll always be my daughter, and I couldn't be prouder of you. Please, stay here with me. I couldn't hold back my tears. Did Dad really want me around? Even after all this crazy stuff? I really love my dad but I couldn't upset him anymore. The next day, Dad and I went around to Laura's adoptive mom's house. I cleared the air with her and invited her to come back with us. She politely declined. Turns out she just wants a simple life. We still meet up sometimes, and we've actually become pretty good friends. Isn't it amazing? Because before that, we were like water and fire. The fact that I don't have to teach her Excel anymore probably helps. <laughs> There are those who do whatever they can to win fame and fortune, but this often comes at a cost. Mum let greed turn her into a monster, and now she's paying for it. I don't like what she did, but she's still my mum. Well, my adoptive mum anyway. So 
I still send her subsidies and wish her happiness for the rest of her life. The truth is that I'd rather forego a huge fortune and live a quiet life than become someone I don't want to be. If it were you, would you do the same to live in peace? Hi there, I'm Betty and I'm 15 years old. Last year I developed a bit of an obsession for something that kind of took over my life. And, to put it bluntly, pretty much became my life. I neglected everything just to get my fix of this one thing. And if it hadn't been for my mom intervening, I don't know what my life would have been like today. In fact, I shudder even at the thought of it. It all started with a game. That sounds pretty tame, right? Well, hear me out. One day on the school bus, I overheard a group of girls in the year above me talking about this game, Gacha Life. I was so intrigued as it sounded exciting. So as soon as I got home later that day, I downloaded it. And well, let's just say the rest was history. From the moment I downloaded it, I couldn't stop playing it. It's fair to say that I'd always loved anime, and so that just made the game appeal even more. Being able to create my own characters and dress them up in cute outfits with wacky hairstyles, I just loved it. And then there was the fact I could create any scenario for them. I'd always been into storytelling and acting, and this was like a dream virtual world where I could let my imagination run wild and create whatever I wanted. Pretty soon, I was addicted. It's true, I couldn't stop playing it. Have you ever become addicted to a game? That thrill and anticipation of opening the app and waiting for the game to load? I couldn't get enough of it. I'd always been quite sociable, spending my weekends hanging out with friends and helping my mom in the garden, but now literally all I wanted to do was play Gacha Life. At first no one really noticed, but one night I got so carried away playing that the next moment I realised the sun was rising and I'd played right through the night. I hadn't slept a wink, and at breakfast I fell asleep on my plate of toast. That's when my mom started to worry, and then that day at school things got worse. I'd completely forgotten that we had a math test. I was so tired I could barely focus, so of course I ended up failing. And then I failed the next test, and the test after that too. All I did was eat, sleep, go to school, and play gacha life. And then after a few weeks, if my mom hadn't called me down to dinner, I'd probably not have even eaten. I just couldn't think about anything else, except the world I'd created inside the game. At the time I couldn't see it, but I had in fact started to mix up reality with the game. I started to dress like my favourite character I'd made in the game, even wearing the same pink blusher on my cheeks and wearing my hair in pigtails. I think I actually believed I was this character. I'm aware of how delusional that sounds now, but at the time it was totally normal to me. When my friends asked me why I was so busy at weekends now, I told them I had a boyfriend and that I was usually hanging out with him. The problem was, I didn't have a boyfriend, not even remotely. It was my character in the game that had a boyfriend. But I'd mixed up my idea of reality and I seriously believed that the boy in the game was my boyfriend. My friends were dying to meet him and asked me so many questions about him. I wasn't even embarrassed about the fact that I was outright lying to them. Deep down, I obviously knew, but on the surface, I truly thought this imaginary boy was my real boyfriend. I was lying in bed playing the game one night when all of a sudden my mom came storming into my room and asked me to hand over my phone. When I wouldn't, she threatened to cut off my allowance and ground me if I didn't give it to her immediately. She said my friend's mom had called her, inquiring about my boyfriend and asking why I wasn't hanging out with my friends anymore. So now my mom wanted to see my phone to find out who this boyfriend was. She came over to my bed and grabbed it out of my hand, and then she saw what was on the screen. My imaginary characters kissing. And then she looked at me. My bloodshot eyes and unkempt hair, and she told me that if I didn't sort myself out, she'd take me to see a psychologist, because clearly, according to her, I had a problem. 
I stayed up so late playing that night that I overslept the next morning, and that's when my mom called it quits. She took me straight to a psychologist that afternoon, even though I protested the whole way there. The psychologist asked me why I seemed so attached to my phone. Then I told him everything. That it wasn't my phone I was attached to. It was this game, Gacha Life. I had been so reluctant to see a psychologist, but actually he really helped me. He made me realize that it's okay to play games like Gacha Life. In fact, it can be very beneficial for my imagination and creativity. But there also needs to be a healthy boundary established between how I view the game. It's not real life. It's just a game. And I have to find a balance between my school life and what I do in my spare time. No game is worth jeopardizing my future. And after that first session with the psychologist, I realized I need to live my life in the real world and not escape into the game all the time. I do still play Gacha Life sometimes because it is fun, but it's now a healthy hobby as opposed to an addictive one. I'm so grateful my mom helped me when she did. Otherwise, who knows what level of obsession I might have taken it to. Have you ever played Gacha Life or become addicted to a game? Please share your experiences with us in the comments section below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more stories.